Welcome, pickleball fans, to the 2024 Deeper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. I am Peter Zernak alongside my play by uh, my uh, color guy, Mark Spackman. Mark, this is an exciting matchup here between Clemson and Southeastern University. I think we're about to see some exciting pickleball here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. This is a uh, first match is going to be a women's doubles match. Featuring, again, Southeastern University. Clemson serving first, gets the first point. It's going to be Bozetta and Feldman from Clemson playing Kusevich and Vera. We'll get through the players here in just a second. We're just getting started. And Clemson's got an early 2-0 lead. Got a lefty-righty matchup here for Clemson, Mark. We do. For those watching at home, you might notice we are playing rally scoring today, so that means a point is earned on every rally. Good hands there at the net by Samantha. You also notice the players will stay on their same side of the court in uh, rally scoring. Gabby Vera serving here for Southeastern. Unfortunate. Unforced error there gives it back to Clemson 3-1 lead. We're serving here for Clemson is Fedora, excuse me, uh, Fiorella Bozzetto. Another point there for Clemson. Players playing with the Gamma Chuck ball today out here. Been getting a lot of good comments about that ball. It's the official ball at Duper. Good drive there by Clemson. They're gonna take an early 5-1 lead and with Rally scoring mark, 5-1 lead's not very safe, always. Get back in the match really quick with Rally scoring. Oh, she pops it up and gets put away there. So these teams have been competing since yesterday. We had teams from all across the nation that came in here to pick on social in Buford, and now we have down to four teams for our semifinals. They're battling out for their share of $6,000 in scholarship money here. Yeah, exciting stuff. That was going to sail along. It'll be a point for Southeastern. Samantha Kusevich going to serve 2-6. Two opposing styles early, Mark. It's like Southeastern trying to play the slow game and Clemson just keep putting pressure on. Keeping them deep in the court, a lot of pace. Fiorella Bazzetto with the serve. Goes right back there with the hard stuff. Just can't handle it at the net there. Just keep putting the pressure on. They have to figure out a way to keep the ball low. Clemson, anything they're getting, really, you know, I always say attack above the waist, but I think they're attacking everything even above the knee right now. So yeah, right there. Seely Feldman, the left-handed, blonde-headed player there for Clemson serving. There's pressure right away, and good eye there by Samantha Kusevich letting it go out. 3-8, Southeastern University serving. Just couldn't quite get it to fall over the net. That one hit right at the tape. It's a beautiful facility here. Buford, Georgia, we're early in the first semifinal match. Again, Clemson facing Southeastern University. And they're just uh, a little miscommunication down the middle on that last ball. Looks like Southeastern players are talking about that, trying to figure that out for next time. Probably a little bit nervous here. That's a good shot there. And as soon as they cover the middle, they go right down the yeah, line with it. Perfect shot there. Those are the ones that kind of make you feel silly out there on the court sometimes. So uh, teams will switch sides here at 11 to three. But Mark, like we said in the uh, rally scoring, 11 to three is not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you can get back in these matches quick. 
So it's nice, as you said, we're here at Pick on Social in Buford, Georgia. This facility opened back on December 7th. So uh, I think today we're celebrating the four month anniversary nice. of this really cool facility with the uh, indoor and outdoor courts and some of the best food in the area. So a lot of pickleball program. And if you're ever in the Buford area, a little northeast of Atlanta, you know, to stop by and check this place out. So I mentioned they're, they're battling for their their share of $6,000 in scholarship money, the winner's going to take home $2,500. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. It's, uh, it's impressive for a you know, little old sport called pickleball that nobody knew about two or three years ago. Well, you know, the first national championship was back in November of 2022. I think they had 150 players in that one. And now we've grown to what it is today. Man, I, I don't know how many were total in this here today, but it was. Uh, it's been two great days of pickleball out here. We've got Clemson leading 11 to 3. We're going to bring back action here from the break of switching sides. So now closest to us in the screen here is Southeastern University, Savage and Vero. Oh, that's really too much power there by Fiorella Bazzetto. Overhead smash puts it away to make it 13 to three. Looked like at the break, the players did decide to stay on the same side of the court. One thing about rally scoring is that a timeout or on the changeover, you can switch sides with your partner if you chose to do so. But looks like both teams wanted to stay with the, the current strategy as we see another winner down the middle. Fiorella Bazzetto just smashing them away. They're getting just a little bit too high. I was watching uh, Southeastern play in their dream breaker to get to this match. And uh, Gabby Vera, she's got a really good backhand. I'm surprised she's playing on that side of the court. Her backhand is outstanding. I didn't see what I, I see what just happened there. From my view, the ball sailed long. Not sure they thought it touched her or not. Nonetheless, it's 15 to three here. So big early lead here. The first match, the women's doubles. For this semifinal matchup featuring Clemson and Southeastern. We'll play a men's match after this and then two doubles matches. And if we're tied after that mark, it's the dream breaker and a great passing shot there down the line by Seely Feldman. A timeout here taken by Southeastern University. They're gonna try to regroup and get back in the match. Yeah, I think one thing I'd like to see from Southeastern here is that maybe they talk about getting those return of serves a little deeper. It seems like they're really getting taken advantage of by the short return. So if they could get those returns a little deeper, set up their points. Um, and uh, and also, you know, the same thing serves serves deeper too, so they can actually score some points here. Let's see if we can get a comeback coming. Yeah, I mean, you just got to string three or four together. I mean, it's tough. But uh, I mean, they, these guys have been playing pickleball for two full days. I'm sure they're, they're up for the challenge. The Clemson Pretty. team is making Coach Dabo proud right now. Yeah, they are. Up by uh, two touchdowns here. First time all year they've been up by two touchdowns. <laughs> so, uh, but they seem confident. Solid bunch. So both these teams will receive a bid to the Nationals now. So that Nationals is going to be held later this year in Houston, Texas in November. So four teams from each regional advance. And then if a team already has a bid, it drops down to one of the next teams. So we saw a team earlier today receive one of those bids. Another point for Clemson. Seeley Feldman serving up 18 to three. Kind of surprised by the lopsided score right now. Another point for Clemson, and they're just feeling it. Everything's going right to their paddles. It's hard. It's a it's a game of runs, and it seems like this run here just keeps going for Clemson. There's the switch. Oh. Is that backhand? Her backhand is outstanding. Oh, this cannot fall for Man, Southeastern. They got no break. Tough break. And it's going to be game point here. Seeley Feldman serving for the first game of this semifinal match. And that sails out in another unforced error. And unfortunately, Southeastern just couldn't get it going. 
Clemson able to take game one in semifinal number one, Mark. And we'll be back here at Pickle and Social in two minutes. Like Gamma Pickleball. At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS Active Recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS. Getting set, pickleball fans, for match number two here at the 2024 Duper Georgia Super Regional at Pickland Social in Beaufort, Georgia. I'm Peter Jezernak alongside Mark Spackman. And Mark, first match could not have gone much better for Clemson to start this whole semifinal. Yeah, the Clemson ladies definitely rolled through that first match, but so now we'll see the men's doubles. The, the format for everybody working here is we'll have one uh, women's doubles match followed by this men's doubles match. Then we'll have two mixed double matches. Um, and then we'll see if we're tied up there. If we happen to be tied at that, you know, it's the first one to win three matches, wins the overall match. But um, if we're tied up there, then we'll go to this special format, the Dream Breaker, where we'll get to see uh, the teams come out and compete in singles. We saw uh, a dream breaker for both of these teams to actually get to the semifinal. Both of them had to battle, uh, or actually, yeah, I forgot who Clemson played. And uh, Southeastern was able to knock them off. So, again, good start for Clemson. They're up 1-0 after the women's matches. And this match here, Mark, features for Clemson, Luke Anthony and Colin Pelfrey. And for Southeastern University, it's going to be Drew Holder and, excuse me, I said Luke Anthony. He's playing with Drew Holder here for Southeastern. And uh, for Clemson, it's Colin Pelfrey and Kyle Compton. Correct. So, so they're getting warmed up here. As a, as a competitor in a tournament format, Mark, the cameras are on. It's a semifinal match. They're playing for $2,500 and some scholarship money. It's uh, it's gotta be a little nerve-wracking for these guys. Oh yeah, I think there's some anxiety out there. A lot of pressure. You got a lot of fans starting to pile in here, and knowing it's being live streamed all back over your college campus with everybody, uh, you know, watching at home. So. Uh, to give you all your uh, positive feedback, I would hope, when you get back <laughs> yeah. to the dorm. What's actually really cool, they've got on the big screen here, the, the feed playing up there, so the kids are actually getting to watch it after after the points are over. It's a little bit of a delay, but uh, we've got a perfect setting here for um, this super regional at Pickland Social, but we're going to get started. Again, the first, first match, the first game in this match went to Clemson, so the guy's looking to... Looks Even like, it up here for Southeastern. Looks like Colin Pelfrey is going to start us out. Two right-handed, all four right-handed players on the court now. Yeah, it's a really good third shot drop. Set up, set it up perfectly, but unable to capitalize there. Drew already showing off that two-hand backhand reset there on that first point. Good 
deep return there by Clemson. Got a familiar face over there calling the game for us. Tom Richardson, certified referee. Keeping everything in check here. Oh. I love a, I love when they say sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry you scored a point. Well done there. It rolls, trickles over the net for Southeastern. I think that was just some courtesy from Drew there, but I doubt <laughs> he was too sorry about getting that winner there. And he serves it out, so. I think that was his partner, Lou. Oh, yeah. Just went a little long on the serve. It's all tied up here at two. Trying to get settled in here. It doesn't feel like anybody can get into much of a rhythm. 3-2 Southeastern serving. Ooh. Popped it up right to his forehand and thought he was going to put it away there, Mark, but he didn't. I liked it, though. He put it right on that shoulder with just a, caught him a little off balance on that. Very smart and controlled. Very impressed with these uh, male players from Southeastern, Drew and Luke. I can see why their team is here. Man, they're tall and long. They're, they cover the whole court and both arms standing in the center of the court. Drew Holder serving. Up five to two. Good put, a, put away there, right at his feet. Almost impossible to return as Southeastern has a 6 2 lead now. Oh, he gets it off the top wow. of the net and over the paddle of Kyle. Nice poach from Drew. He's a senior. Definitely showing some pickleball experience here as well. That one's gonna sail out on Drew. And Clemson's gonna get it back here down 3-7. Again, if you're watching at home, just wanna remind you, we are playing rally scoring here. So if you're a little confused with the scoring, it's different from the traditional scoring. So the same format adopted by Major League Pickleball. A lot of fun for all the players, but a point is earned on every rally. The players also don't switch sides. Man, off the top of the net, so turnaround, turnabout's fair play there. Just interrupts the timing there for Luke, and he just hit in the net. Just, it seems so simple because it just moves a little bit, but it, I mean, everything about the rhythm, the timing of that shot right there gets interrupted by the tip of the net. That net core can really change the point there it is for again. sure. A little miscommunication there, I think, by Southeastern, but Luke and Drew. Talking it out, point for Clemson. You're talking about the net, Colin Johns, you know, Ben's brother is known for his distaste of the <laughs> net cords and his antics on the court. Uh, these players uh, seem to have a much better attitude about it so far today. Clemson getting their way back in it. Southeastern that's gonna be Drew serving 9-6. I like how Clemson's really keeping them deep when they can. Southeastern's able to get up there pretty quickly and an absolutely beautiful backhand shot there. Watch the replay here. This backhand is fantastic and has Clemson totally fooled. Colin didn't really know what to do when that ball was coming right at him on his forehand side. It's a heck of a play. Now Colin's a little bit frustrated and hits that one in the net. It's gonna be 11 to six and we're gonna switch sides here, Mark. That's a, that's a heck of a shot. It's fun to watch. It's good, you know, Kyle is uh, from right here in Johns Creek, Georgia area, so really close to here. It's almost like his home courts. We're not far. And he was uh, part of the Georgia Regional Champs in 2023. And his partner Collins up from Fort Mill, South Carolina. And uh, he made it to the semifinals in the Virginia College Cup. So they're partnering here together. 
So what are your thoughts on this rally scoring, Peter? You know, I like it. It rewards defense. I, I'm a When I play, I like to play the net, and as close as I can, I like to – to play defense, and I just think it, it rewards it rewards the defense. So if you every every point counts. So return a serve, you bury the net. Doesn't isn't just a side or isn't just a second serve. It's it's you actually lose a point, and it, I think it really makes you fo forces you to concentrate on hitting the the better sh pickleball shot as opposed to what you think is the best shot. And a good rally there by so much easier for new players to learn as well. So I really that's like that. very true too. Southeastern scores one on the first serve after the break and an unforced error there by Colin. He wants that one back. He's frustrated. Oh, and a service error. There you go. That's an exact perfect example. You're rewarded. A, you're kind of taking a point away from yourself by a service error. 7-13 Clemson serving. They've trailed the whole match, but it doesn't really seem like a six-point game. Oh, good try there. Kyle trying to get that backhand drop shot in that corner, but that's a tough shot to do. Well, nice patience from Drew Holder there, just keeping them deep in the court, knowing he's got the advantage. The longer the point goes, if he's at the non-volley zone and they're at the baseline, nine times out of ten, that first play at the non-volley zone is going to win. Oh, great hands there. Drew Holder there, the net, just putting it right away. I'm really excited to see uh, Drew and his mixed doubles match that we're going to see coming up because I, uh, I think we're going to see some ben, uh, ben John's action here with him covering so? a bunch of court. He's quite the player. Clemson going to take a timeout and regroup. 15 to 7, and like I said, Clemson has been behind pretty much the whole match. And uh, not much answer for Luke by Colin and Kyle. They've just kind of been off, off balance. Seems like they haven't really been able to get in it for more than one or two points at a time. Tom um, Richardson's manning down the time clock there at center court. One of the best referees in the country. Lucky to have him here calling action today. Travels everywhere to do this. Commands the court well. So it's. We do have the advantage of replay today here. You're right, you're right, we absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'm excited, you're right, we have it. A lot of great sportsmanship from all the players here. Southeast is serving 15-7, coming off the timeout. See if Clemson can make the best of this timeout. And two net courts back and forth. And it doesn't quite fall over there for Drew Holder, but I mean, excuse me for Luke, but uh, man, that's a tough shot right there. Clemson going to try to get back in here down 10. Down 7, excuse me, I thought it was 18 8. And a little miscommunication there by Clemson. They tap paddles and then, then let it go. Clemson's going to have to find a way to advance in the court through the transition zone. They're getting stuck back there at the baseline. Uh, unforced error. Since the frustration for Clemson, it's 18 to 8, Southeastern. Stepping on the gas now. Clemson leads 1-0. They won the first women's doubles match. Oh, good firefight here. Great hands. That's fun to watch right there. Yeah, it is. Good stuff. Great hands. And the crowd's the first time we get to hear this crowd. Crowd always loves a good hands battle. 19-8. That one's... That was called out. I think we're going to go to our replay what here. For Mark. He'll, he'll the ball. As there we're trying to locate the ball to escape through some fencing here, we're going to get a chance to see replay on this play. Oh, this is going to be fun. I love this. 
So, like we said, we have replay, and it looks like Mark, that is really close. He called, The call was out. He called it out. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this is the uh, the argument about pickleball. Yeah, it's like, which way are we standing and yes. looking at this, right? right. So, so the rule is technically you're supposed to see space. Yeah, but if we were standing inside the court, would we? I mean, I don't know if I would see space. So... Uh, I'm glad we're just commentating and not <laughs> having to make a decision on this one. No doubt about that. It's so close. Uh, the Southeastern is getting thinks excited, thinking it's going to be called in. And um, we'll go over to our referee. Very excited. Like I mentioned, there's a there's a big screen in here showing the live uh, the feed, <laughs> so the call is going to be in. So you see uh, Kyle yeah. Kyle Compton using his paddle to clap hands and tell him it was a good shot. You know what, I, I, I'm not mad calling that ball out. I mean, that's how close, close that was to call that in, in real time. Like while you're trying to play the game, that's, I mean. No, that's what he saw. That's one thing I think with this, you know, there's never anybody intentionally calling the ball the wrong way. We're just playing. Sometimes we see it a little differently from our angle. I'm not so sure with the, you know, camera angle there that you Kyle's say angle was, might not have right, been better. Right, you're <laughs> right about that. But not, they're serving for the lead and the ball goes out and, I guess the pickleball never lies. I don't know. There's no, no talent now. So it's 920. Clemson hopefully maybe. Is he gonna I'm not sure if anybody knows the score here. Here we go. I think they thought, I think they thought right, it was it in. Right. Okay. Oh, that's going to be a, another game point here. Twenty to nine, Clemson hits it out. So Colin and Kyle just couldn't quite get the mojo going. I think there was a little frustration early in the match, a couple net cords that got it, but uh, Southeastern ties it up. We got a one-one match. We're going to come back in just a minute to see match number three. Ufos, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary Ufoam technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of Ufos and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is Ufos active recovery. Activate your recovery with Ufos. Pickleball fans, we're back. We're live at Pickle and Social in Beaufort, Georgia. This is the 2024 Duper Georgia Super Regional. And Mark, this has uh, been exciting action. This is semifinal match number one. I'm Peter Jezernak, along with Mark Spackman. And we, uh, we saw the women battle it out, and Clemson won that in the men's doubles match. Southeastern took care of Clemson, so we're even now. It's gonna be the first of two doubles matches, uh, excuse me, mixed matches. 
Yeah, Mark. we're all tied up 1-1 here, Peter, Clemson Southeastern. So we've we've played the women's doubles, we've played the men's doubles. Now we're going to go to some mixed doubles action. Uh, play five lines. It's the first of three that wins. If we happen to be tied 2-2, we would go to a dream breaker where all teams will uh, set a lineup and come out and play some singles. So let's see what happens. It seemed like uh, both were pretty dominant matches so far, I thought. I thought the Clemson women really dominated, and then the Southeastern men came out and dominated. So it will be uh, interesting to see what happens here when they uh, pair up with each other. Yeah, it's going uh, to be fun. So for Clemson, it's going to be uh, Kyle Compton and Fia Fiorella Bozzetto facing Samantha Kusevic and Luke Anthony from Southeastern. Fiorella going to get us started. So it'll be interesting here. Now Luke was playing on the right side when he was playing men's with his partner Drew Holder, but now he's going to move over and take over the left here. So we'll see what happens. Oh, some more dinking we've seen also my final match and that would sales wide there on Kyle Compton. And Southeastern's going to take an early 1-0 lead. We saw in the last match, both of these guys, great hands in the net. Big powered on the drive and an unforced error there by Luke Anthony. It's going to be Compton serving here. Down 1-2. Or 1-1. One, one. Tie side up. Shot there by Fiorella. We saw her in the first match in the women's match, and she was strong, and she attacks early and often. Again, Kyle is right here from the Johns Creek area. We are in Buford, Georgia at the Pickle and Social. Pickle and Social open back in December. It's the premier pickleball destination in the area with six indoor courts as well as eight outdoor courts. Uh, cornhole, ping pong, or maybe I'm supposed to call it table tennis, I'm not really sure, but uh, live music and the best food in the area. Great, great, job great place for pickleball. Great job by Kyle. Jump in there and put it away. He needs to get something to boost that confidence. He seems frustrated. I think he didn't like losing that men's match just a minute ago, but he's wiped it, forgotten about it, and now we're going to... Oh, goodness, he gets a tough volley up high on Samantha Kusevic, but I'm sure it was not intentional, but that one hurts. Put it right on that shoulder. Good place to target if you are going to target an opponent. Fiorella Bazzetto serving up 4-2. She's driving again. Unlucky. Luke Anthony unable to put that one away. It sails long. See Luke Anthony taking up 90% of the court, if not more. And that one goes out. Good shot there by Slightly long. Try to get it over the big, tall Luke Anthony. And like we mentioned in the men's match, he's just long and tall. He's all over the place. Felt Good like hand. I was watching Ben and Anna Lee there <laughs> for a second. Oh. Uh, maybe I should say Ben and Colin. I think Ben lets Anna Lee play more <laughs> in the court than he does Colin. That's may be true. May well be true. Rosetto serving up 6-3. Oh, didn't wait till he finished calling the score. Get a rhythm, you know. You want to serve right away. Well, the Super Collegiate Championship Series is really quite impressive, Peter. And as we talked about earlier, it started back in 2022. Schools from all over the country competing. Now it's uh, expanded, and now we're having eight Super Regionals this year. This is the Georgia Regional. Uh, that the teams will all advance to the Nationals in November in Houston, Texas. Giving, they're giving away all kinds of scholarship money there and along the way. Yeah, $32,000 in scholarship money at the final, $6,000 on the line today. Well, if my 18-year-old didn't already have some baseball scholarship money, I'd tell him to get into pickleball. That's a whole lot of money. Yeah, the way this pickleball thing is growing, that pickleball might be more uh -huh. money than baseball here for long. It's no time for a switch. Good 
Good hands there by Samantha Fisherman. Kyle Compton got pinned in the corner here, right next to us. Yeah, would have liked to have about another foot there yeah. on the court there. Or maybe you could have hit the back end. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, unfortunate there there by Luke Anthony. It'll be service back over to Clemson. Fiorella gonna serve here up eight six. That one a little too high. Luke Anthony will put that one away all day long. A little thing. bit of momentum here maybe for Southeastern. It's getting close again. As you've talked about with this rally score and you are never out of a match. Nice lob. Oh, couldn't get that one to roll over. And it rolled on top of the net about a foot and a half there. That's the one thing, we've seen a lot of balls in the net, rolling off the net. You know, one thing as I've been watching Fiorella play, I've noticed that she does not hit the ball in the net. It is always over um, into the other side, giving her opponents a chance. I think that's why she's so effective. You know, your first opponent when we're playing is always the net. So we got to beat the net first before we can beat our opponent. She's very patient, but strikes quick when she can. Samantha went wide out there and got that ball back. Kept it in play. I'm just amazed how quick their hands are. It's relentless. They just keep pounding away. Samantha Kusevic unable to get it over the net. And switch sides here at 11-8. So Clemson's got the lead at the turn here. We're tied up 1-1. Clemson took the women's match, followed by Southeastern coming back with a, a win in the men's doubles match. And now we're at 11-8 with Clemson in the lead at the turn in our first mixed doubles match. And we're playing best three out of five matches. So players competing for $6,000 in scholarship money this weekend. Players getting ready to go back on the court. Gonna have Kyle Holder starting out to serve here for Clemson up 11-8. the first ball in the net there. So that's going to put us now at 9-11 Southeastern with Luke Anthony to serve. Oh, great hands there. Back and forth. Nice backhand drop from Luke, set up the firefight. Then it just went a little long. He ended up a little on the short end of that at the end. Nine, nine, unforced air there by Samantha. Thirteen, nine. You really can't see how much of the court Luke Anthony's taken up when he, when he steps in front of Samantha on this side. Look at all that space there. You think it would be so easy to just put it away, but he's so quick laterally. He's quick, and Samantha's been really solid at knowing her role, just being really consistent, keeping the ball back in play over there. A nice reset there. Fiorella sped it up and really got it going, and Luke Anthony's hands are just so quick. Good placement there. And the Southeastern crowd is starting to make some noise. Good pick up. Good pick up, a good put away. That was a great play. That's where we saw the use in there that we saw a third shot drive to set up the fifth shot drop and move in. <laughs> then he got to the non-volley zone and took over the point there. 
Great hands there by Samantha and a fantastic shot there by Fiorello. Perfect angle down the line. Again, we saw the third shot drop to set up the fifth shot drop. I like that strategy from them. That turn, it didn't go their way, but uh, that's how they're getting into that non-volley zone. Most points are won by the team at the non-volley zone. Great reset from Samantha there. Oh, man. Luke Anthony threw it out wide. Fiorello just popped it right back up. Really good shot, good setup, and good point. I think it's Samantha with that little two-handed backhand reset that got that point going the right way. She's just quietly doing You're her right. job You're over right. there. And quietly, uh, Southeastern back in this game. Not that they really ever, ever out of it, but playing this point for the lead, or for a tie, but unforced error there. It's going to go back to Clemson up 15-13. And now you just can't let it get too far away. I mean, rally scoring, like I said, you're never really out of it. But when it's late, you just can't give up one or two unforced. That's two in a row. So. Clemson's up 16-13. This is match number three, the first of two mixed doubles matches. And a hit off the edge of the paddle, miss hit there and sails out of bounds, and it's going to be Southeastern serving down 14-16. That's one of the things I love about rally scoring. So Fiorella took a chance there, stepped in, went for that backhand, put away. Um, in oh, traditional my. Oh. Wow. That bounced on top of the net and rolled on top of the net and barely dropped in before it rolled out of bounds and virtually impossible to hit. Thought Tough we might shot. see our first ATP there around, but did not go that far out. 17-14. Clemson leads. Tied up one to one. The women won for Clemson, the men won for Southeastern, and we're in a tight battle here for match number three in the first of two mixed. Good hands by Samantha. Kind of scorpion on it. Yeah, we didn't have a timeout to go to, but they've definitely, Clemson has gone this strategy now. They're trying to get the ball to Samantha and then speed up at every opportunity they got. She's done a good job of sort of battling that back, but the last couple of points, they've kind of taken advantage of that. That uh, gets a timeout from Southeastern here. What are they talking about, Mark? Well, I think they're probably pointing out the fact what the strategy is, how they're going to do that, how they're going to get the ball redirected over Luke's way. That's uh, Brady Meir, who's over there talking with his players. Uh, Brady is the head of the Southeastern uh, Pickleball Club, so um, he's uh, giving them some feedback. He gave us a pretty good scouting report of their season. Mr. Yeah. Meir did, yeah. Yeah, they've uh, got a program been going down there for quite a while. It's really cool for them to be competing with schools like Clemson out here. Samantha Kusevic from Cleveland, Ohio. That's where my mom and dad are from, Mark. Luke Anthony from Noonan, Georgia. Samantha has a background in volleyball. Luke played everything, softball, excuse me, soccer, football, basketball. See a lot of volleyball players having a lot of success yeah. here. So Elise Jones at the pro level is one, a very accomplished volleyball background. 19-14 here, Clemson leads. Great hands, good battle here. Oh, it's a tough shot. That was five or six that Samantha just kept getting back and really uh, good shape, but that one was just a little bit too high and Kyle Compton's able to put it away. and. It's now 20 to 14 mark. Clemson looks and trying to look to take a 2-1 lead. This is the great thing about rally here. And now, you know, they're uh, frozen at 20. They have to win on their serve for Clemson. So uh, Southeastern has a chance to rattle, rattle off a few points here. No consequences. Are you more aggressive here, or, or do you just keep playing steady, make them make a mistake? I always think you, you, know, you still just got to win the point, right? So you don't really want to change the style too much. Um, whatever's working. Mm, great shot by Kyle Compton to the backhand to Luke Anthony. He's unable to get it back over the net, and Clemson will serve for game point again. 
Purello serves deep in and services out and a tough way to lose it for Samantha but she was fantastic this um short end of the stick there Mark they fall 15 21 and Clemson takes a 2-1 lead in semifinal number one from Buford Georgia we'll be back oh are they going to the replay oh we're watching the replay it was definitely out but when you have the toys you can play with it <laughs> At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS Active Recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS. Check out these new Gamma paddles. Yo, I gotta try that paddle. Here you go. Play with style. Play with quantum by Gamma Pickleball. Pickleball fans, we are back at the 2024 Duper Collegiate Super National Super Regionals, excuse me, here in Buford, Georgia. It's got semifinal match number one. We just saw the first of two mixed matches. Clemson able to take a 2-1 lead. And we're gonna see the second mixed doubles match here. Mark, they're getting warmed up. And what do you think about this one? Haven't seen it, all four of these players already play. Yeah, well, Clemson jumped out with a big win in the ladies. And then we saw Southeastern uh, jump back with a big uh, win in the men's. And then that sort of translated to a very evenly mixed match in round one now. I think from what I've seen, I'm interested to see what we're going to see from Drew Holder here on the Southeastern side. I think he kind of uh, took over that men's match. Curious to see if he's going to do the same thing here in the uh, mixed doubles match. But four quality players here. So really looking forward to the action here. For Clemson, it's going to be Seely Feldman serving here. She's the lefty playing with Colin Pelfrey. And Drew Holder's partner, who's going to be returning serve here, is Gabby Vera for Southeastern. And we are set, and the first serve goes out. A little nerves there, maybe, for Seely Feldman. So those of you watching, you notice that Southeastern did score a point on that. We are playing rally scoring, so you earn a point on every rally today. A little nerves on both sides as we have an out serve and then a third shot into the net there from Drew Holder. Here we go. We saw it in the first game with Southeastern with Luke Anthony and like you said, Drew Holder's gonna take up and you can see, see it pretty good uh, from this camera angle with these guys on this side of the court nearest us, but uh, he definitely takes up a majority, far, far majority of the court. He lobs that one a little too high, but good reset. Gabby pops it up and Colin puts it away. 
which is a recipe for success in pickleball. Tied at two. Crowd starting to fill in. This is our first of two semifinal matches today here. Oh, it's a great left-handed backhand, excuse me, backhanded shot down the line and buries it right in the corner. Our semifinal matches will be followed by the championships later today. We've been playing pickleball since yesterday here as teams from all over the country have come to compete at Pickle and Social. Wow, what a point, Peter. Good firefight there. Seely Feldman doing all she could do, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drew Holder, and he's just uh, a little too much. And the southeastern crowd again. Get a little fired up. I love to see it. Such a fun sport to play, and love to see the, y the younger players really gravitating towards it. You see the open play everywhere. You see it obviously here now on the collegiate level, but um, Duper doing a great job to be able to put this kind of stuff on to encourage the growth of the sport. Been a big week for Duper. We had the announcement this week. I think now we can say Duper is the official rating system of pickleball now as they've done their deal with uh, United Pickleball. Yeah. They're the official rating system for MLP, PPA, United Pickleball State Championships, and these collegiate championships. So real excited for Duper and the rating. All these players that participate here take at least six hours uh, per semester at their school and all here representing their college. Oh, tough Ooh. shot there. See Feldman, good hustle there to get even get to it, just to get a paddle on it, but unable to control it. It's hard when you're right, right at the post right there. Drew Holder serving 7-3, Southeastern with the lead here, and it's an unforced error, return to serve there. Eight to three now. That one hits the net and sails a little long. Oh, it's the almost the exact same shot we just saw a minute ago. Good drop there by Drew Holder. Again, Seeley just unable to get it and goes right towards Great the Great display post of athleticism yeah. to even get to that ball. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have gotten up after hitting that ball. Good backhanded, two-handed two backhand drive right there, right at Celia, and she put it in the net, and she's a little bit frustrated. And it sails out of bounds there for Drew Holder. And see if Clemson can scratch back here. Colin Pelfrey going to serve here down 5-10. There it is. That's the rally scoring for you. Now it's quickly 6-10, and you're serving with a chance to only be down by three. So the obvious strategy here is they're going after Sealy Feldman. Going to switch sides with the 11-6 lead. I mean, that's, that's what you do in pickleball, I guess, right? Well, I think you definitely strategy-wise. I mean, a lot of times if, they're, you, if you find a player, you may have to target. Um, but here, I think what we're seeing here is that we, we've seen the two strengths. You know, we saw the Clemson women earlier just dominate. Then we saw the Southeastern men come out. Now we see, I mean, this is still a very evenly mixed match right here that could go sure, either way. Well, yeah. So, but if Southeastern could hold on to their lead, it would set up an exciting dream breaker final here in our first semifinal to see yeah. how it goes. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. It's like a nightmare for me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make sure everybody's in the right place at the right time. The referees do a really good job of it. Our referee today, Tom Richardson, calling us back into play here. Southeastern serving up 11 to six. And it sails long for Drew Holder and Clemson going to try to get it rolling here down 7-11. I like the soft game, though. I think I like the strategy. Just go soft. Yeah, it's been really interesting in this mix. I mean, on the mix, we've seen Southeastern. They have definitely played a more dominant male side. The male player stepping over to the middle of the court uh, as that ball 
is called out. I think we're going to get to see our replay yes. here again. This one's right coming at us, too. Because it was coming right at me. I thought oh, they're that not going to challenge it. Oh, no, no challenge. Okay. Um, mm. Looks like maybe they missed an opportunity on the challenge there. Teams get two challenges per match, but if they uh, challenge, they get it wrong, they do lose a timeout. Our broadcast team over Looks here is confirming our thought that that ball was probably in, but we have moved on now and there we go, a nice little dink rally. But what I was saying before we got to that call was that, you know, the Southeastern teams really playing sort of the male dominant in the middle of the court where you see Clemson's playing more uh, traditional, you know, each player covering half their court here and uh, interesting strategy. Oh. Perfect placement, a little bit of miscommunication there by Clemson, but a fantastic shot by Drew Holder. Hit it where they're not. Oh, great shot there. Colin Pelfrey steps in and Great hits play him by Colin. It's a behind Drew Holder. So that's the only way you can get it, get it going to get it past him. Here we are all knotted up again here, going two point difference. Oh, great pick up there by Seely Feldman. And another one where she's got to go right towards <laughs> the post again. That's a uh, uh, shot of the day. Unfortunately, she's been on the wrong side of the stick every time. I think while we're seeing her have to run for those balls, that's definitely an area. She's a lefty, so the forehand's in the middle, so they're definitely trying to target that outer fourth of the court to her back end over there. So they've been fortunate enough to have a couple of them that have been short that she's having to run out there to get. Great shot, misdirection there by Drew. Wow, that inside out. He almost, we had the angle for that, didn't we? That was, was sweet. I thought he was shot. going down to the middle until he wasn't. It's almost like a ping pong shot. I wonder if you play a little table tennis. Comes up a little bit short on that one. Yeah, still had the weight on that back foot. Didn't get the weight transfer. So that's one thing. Got to be on that drop. Got to get that weight going from back foot to front foot. Talking about Drew Holder from Trenton, Michigan, in his Masters, in the Masters program here. Played some college football and some college soccer. So quite the athlete. Very athletic young man. Yeah. So getting his master's in pickleball. Yeah. Quite a player. We got a 17-12 lead now. Gabby Vera playing with Drew Holder. I watched her play that Dream Breaker match. Her two-handed backhand is great. She was running around a couple forehands to hit it. Another misdirection there by Drew Holder and just too much to handle. Colin Pelfrey didn't have an answer. It was right at his hip. That was so smart. I like seeing that. You know, so often on the speed up, we go so hard that we think then the people just step out of the way and it goes long. But he, he knew he had the advantage. He just flicked it over there, put the pressure on his opponent. Even if it came back, he would have had to put away on the next shot. Yeah. And just a flick of the wrist is so quick. Does the same again same. right there. Same shot. And even that one was even lower. Great shot and a good timeout here, I think, by Clemson. You notice when he's doing that speed up, he's not hitting it hard, and he's also targeting up high right at the player's chest. Yeah. And uh, preferably on paddle side. I think that last one is more to the backhand, but that, you know, paddle side chest is a, a great place for that just little flick speed up. And on, honestly, what did I, I think going towards their hip, you know, down in that area when, when you know they're, for, they're, they're firing forehand, 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 and then trying to go toward their opposite hip, but that's what first shot he hit towards Pelfrey was right at his hip, and man, it was perfectly placed. So we're getting ready to come back out of the time timeout here. Uh, one thing about the timeout, players are allowed to switch sides. Those are the, the times you can switch sides with your partner is on a timeout or on the changeover. Uh, so far today, we have not seen a team utilize that um, as a strategy. Yeah. 
Southeastern has a 19-12 lead and a 2-1, uh, excuse me, trailing 2-1 in the whole semifinal match of best of five. Put away there by Puffrey and Clemson. I don't think these Clemson Tigers are going to go down easy. Nope. They're going to battle back here. Ooh, tough. Tough backhanded return in the net there. I'd like to see Clemson just make sure they get the third shot over the net, preferably towards Gabby's area here. The exact opposite of that just happened. Yeah, they did the exact opposite. I just think that's dangerous. I know they think that, uh, you know, Drew's covering in the middle, but you're going the, inch, the net's two inches higher over there in that side, so it's a lot lower percentage. Um, I'd rather go cross court and then get behind them later. 2014, point goes out. I mean, excuse me, ball goes out. Point goes to Clemson. Clemson now serving 15-20. Southeastern's going to have to win a point on their serve now that they're at 20. And they will serve here for the game again. It's going to be Gabby Vera serving to Seely Feldman. 2015. That's a great shot. Two really good shots by both of those ladies. Gabby Vera. So I like that. Pinned her they back wait. there deep, and she picked it up and put it in a great spot and right on the line. You notice they waited until the point developed a little bit before going behind Drew. I like that. I like that patience shown there where they're waiting. That one's a little too high. There, that's the trouble. Oh, uh, was, she's got it up a little too high. Drew able to put it away with force and deep in the court. And they're going to be serving for the match again in 2016. Oh, great shot there by Celia Feldman. That was too high. And another misdirection forehand. And Colin Pelfrey isn't going to miss many of those. So if we get back to Southeastern, one thing I would like, we talked about the only time you can switch sides is in the timeout. So we've had, we'll talk about it here in a second. Great return. Uh, good shot. And just a little bit of touch right there. Gets Colin Pelfrey on the move, and he's unable to return it. So Gabby Vera is going to serve here for so the 16. match game. Here's where I would have liked to see a timeout. So Gabby has served the whole match. Um, to, over here, so yeah. I, I would have liked to seen a timeout and let Drew go for that serve one time. I know it would put him on the right side of the court, but just that mix up one time pressure yeah. thing. I would have liked to seen it earlier when we were like at 2016 rather than 2018, because now I'm afraid that if they do it now, it may put pressure on themselves. But they True. really had a chance to take a gamble earlier. Good return there by Gabby very deep. No, oh, that one goes in the net. So they're going to shot here to do it. 2018, Gabby going to serve. Southeastern University trying to even up this match. And that one goes wide. And that's going to do it. Ball sails so wide there, down that line. Yeah, it was, it was a really good shot, good hands there. But Drew Holder and Gabby Vera able to hold off Colin Pelfrey and Sully Feldman to even it up. Two games a piece now yeah, that confirms the replay confirms it so we're headed yeah. to a dream breaker that's what we, that's what we all came for right some free pickleball so we uh we are going to take a break here when we get back we're going to see game five Duper.
Yeah. yeah. Let's, go. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. Uh. I just gotta go hard. Welcome back to the 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. I'm Peter Jezernak, along with Mark Spackman. We just saw the fourth match, the second doubles, mixed doubles match, Mark. And this whole uh, match is tied up now 2-2. So we go to the Dream Breaker. And the Dream Breaker, you want to go through the Dream Breaker format? Sure, it's going to be exciting. So uh, Clemson's the home team here, so they're going to put their lineup out first. Uh, each player is going to play four points. Notice we are playing singles now, and so after they put their lineup out, then uh, Southeastern will get to match their lineup up against them. So uh, one player from each team will come out and uh, play four points of singles against each other. We'll keep rotating until we have a winner at 21, and again, we'll be playing rally scoring. Uh, just like we have been all day. Uh, I love the rally scoring myself. Makes it really easy for new players to learn. It also uh, means that on every rally, a point is earned. So I think it's going to be some real interesting strategy here because I think what we've seen so far is, uh, you know, obviously these players are all great athletes. I mean, nobody would be here if they weren't uh, great athletes. So all four, but we have seen maybe to this point that the Southeastern uh, men have been maybe a little stronger and then the Clemson ladies um, a little stronger. So it'll be interesting to see how they uh, work that together. And then uh, I'm really curious to see uh, I think it may come down to one of the Clemson guys or one of the Southeastern ladies stepping up at a big point here and doing something special to, to bring this home for their team. I think you're absolutely right. It's going to be uh, gonna be fun to see who sets whose lineup where. Well, you, know, you can set them up however you want. So you could see men playing women in singles. So, so again, this is part of the Duper Collegiate Championships. This is our Georgia Super Regional. Uh, this is the premier collegiate championships. It started back in 2022. Uh, Originally started with 18 schools, then it went to 2023 with 36, and now we've seen it expand even more today. We're here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia, one of the premier facilities really on all of the country here with six indoor courts, eight outdoor courts, some of the best uh, food and beverage in the country. So we're getting excited. I think we're getting ready to start. We've got Tom Richardson. Uh, our referee here tracking down some players. You got so, a prediction here, Peter? Um, I think Southeastern is gonna is gonna take it. Okay. I think uh, 
I was surprised. I didn't know if I'd be able to talk you into a prediction or not here. I thought you might play it safe and not pick one. It's definitely a... Oh, I just meant for the first four. Oh, uh, okay. First four points. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, to your point, the, the men uh, the, the men for Southeastern are a little stronger. Um, but they've shown that in these first four matches. But um, it'll be interesting to see kind of how it goes. Um, yeah. I think all these players are so strong, though, Peter, that, you know, even though we've seen what we've seen so far, any one of these players could step up and turn out to be the MVP of this dream right. breaker. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's a strategy, but it's also it's a mental thing too. You know, it, you, you don't want to defeat yourself before. You know, if you're a a, a, a strong male and you're going up against a, a, probably a weaker female in 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 your round of four, you can't let that just go to your head like, oh, I got these four points. Like you still got to play the points. And kind of goes the other way too. You know, for the ladies, they don't want to get def defeated if they're uh, you know if they're going up against the strongest male out there. So you know, every point counts. So just all you got to do is play your four. So we are going to see uh, the two men starting it out here. We're going to see Drew Holder against um, uh, Kyle. Kyle Compton here yeah. to start it out. Been really impressed, I want to say, before we get started, too, about the sportsmanship through this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, not only towards each other, but also with players. I mean, it's just all been super positive attitudes out of these young athletes. Oh, that one sails a little out. Clemson is. That goes a little wild. They choose not to use a challenge here. That's Remember, good. teams get two challenges. If the challenge is incorrect, they lose a timeout, which could be really big to lose a timeout here in a dream breaker. Oh, tough luck there by Drew Holder. Just unable to get it. Oh, there's a. Nice two-handed backhand from Kyle Compton on that last point. See that replay? That was way closer than I thought it was. Like, way closer. Uh, but it was definitely confirmed that it was out. Good job. Production team here is fantastic. Giving us these replays. All right. So after the first roundup, we're all even up. But now we see Fiorelli taking on Luke Anthony as we see the... Matchup of a lady or just a guy. We are noticing the warm-ups how Fiorelli really looks like she has quite a singles game. Strong in singles game. There's a oh, it's a little too strong. Fiorelli just sends it a little long. It's going to be three-two southeastern serving. Great reset there. Oh, man, good hustle. What a get over man. there, though. Fantastic. Way to make him hit an extra ball as we see the replay. Sure, and it really was a good shot. It was not an easy shot for him to put back. He does put it away, but now a 4-2 lead. The crowd is starting to uh, build around us. It's pretty fun. This dream breaker format. Clemson's able to grab one here. This is huge for them if they can split here again. Southeastern really trying to make their name for themselves here in the pickleball world. She does. She evens it up. That one sails wide, along there on Luke Anthony and Fiorella Bizzetto really just went out there and didn't back down at all. Able to split there, and uh, it's four to four. So I think Southeastern was hoping for a little better result after their two men take the court than being at 4-4, but we'll see what happens here. This is Colin. Oh, great shot wow. there by Vega. Uh, Gab Vera, sorry, excuse me. Gabby, Gabby Vera, Vera shows. I think that's something we're seeing, the single skills. I think Gabby's probably got a tennis background from what I saw right there. And Colin with an unforced error there into the net. And that is uh, a little bit shocking here. They're getting a 6-4 lead. They're playing Clemson. Oh, good return there. Kyle's going to serve. Excuse me, that's not Kyle. This is a big point right here, Colin. I think, if Southeastern could win this and take it over yeah. as they push it to the fourth rotation. Pelfrey with a serve. 
Oh, great hands. And man, oh. got it right into his body. Was not able to return it. And Gabby Vera wins three out of the four points there in Southeastern is getting excited. So now we're going to have, this is uh, Seely Feldman return and serve. Facing off here with, uh, excuse me, uh, Samantha Kusevich. Passing shot there by Feldman. That's going to tie it up here, 7-7. Seven, seven. Nothing Samantha Kusevich could do on that one. Oh, another one. She went back in to the right and into the left. Two really good shots there. And Clemson takes an 8-7 lead. This match is nip and tuck here. So here we go, 8-7. Still got a bounds on Kusevic. All right, so we've seen our first rotation. We're pretty much yeah. knotted up, nine and seven. Now we're going to go back to the guys that started. We we'll have Kyle and Drew here battling it out. Great wow. shot there by Kyle Compton and a fist pump. Man, that's a fantastic shot. 10-7. That one's going to go out of bounds. 11-7. So is that five points in, six points in a row now for it Clemson? Is, it's six in a row. We're going to have a change out here. As you notice, the team switched sides. You know, I'm just impressed with you know, how this really uh, does differentiate the teams with their singles ability. You know, Man, so we've seen the kidding. doubles. You are not kidding. Uh, some of these uh, players are just really impressing me with their uh, singles really showcases their athleticism and what they can do. <laughs> Seeing some shots I honestly wasn't really expecting. I, you're right. And it's uh, great stuff from these guys. It has uh, been nothing but impressive. And, you know, the Dream Breaker format is just uh, it's exciting. I mean, as no matter what, but you know, the stakes here, trying to make it to the finals. This is semifinal match number one. Oh man, that, thing, that ball was over the net. It hit the net and it was popped right out over back. on top of it and then falls back down to his side. Be a point for Southeastern. Stop the run by Clemson, it's now 8-11. Oh, that one sails wide. So we're going to switch players again. It's going to be Fiorella Bozzetto and Luke Anthony. Clemson with a 12-8 lead. I like this matchup. Oh, my oh. goodness. Off the top of the net. Falls in. Again, it's we get the courtesy sorry from Luke there <laughs> right, about that. Right. But I think right now he'll take it any way he can get it right here. No doubt. I watched Fiorelli play some up in the Virginia regionals on their broadcast. Uh, she, it's uh, even more impressive in person. It was impressive on the telecast. But she's oh, yeah. quite the player over there. She's athletic. Taking a 13-9 lead. Great. Good excitement. The crowd is feeling it. The Clemson team there in that corner. Really getting behind her. Oh my goodness. Oh. Fiorello. Passing Rizzo shot. With an absolute stunner. Oh, just out of reach. See how she rolled that forehand on the Man. angle there. Doesn't get much better than that. It's going to be Gabby Vera and Colin. Pelfrey. And good serve there by Colin coming right at us. Gabby unable to get it back with a two handed back end. And Clemson takes a 16 to 9 lead. Starting to get a little out of hand here. Yeah, you don't want to let it get too far. 
And these players are playing for potential $6,000 in scholarship money being divided up amongst the teams today. So there is a little bit on the line here. Man, great drop shot there. And Clemson is on a run again. It's a nice touch right there, that ball. Just into the top of the net. And we're going to switch it up here. It's going to be Seeley Feldman. And Samantha Kusevic. Oh, puts it right in the corner. Too far. Good angle there. Kusevic couldn't get it. Just out. Yeah. Take a break here. I love how all the players are supporting each other yeah. on every shot. Game point here, 2010. Silly Feldman serving, keeping Kusevic back deep. Good job there by Kusevic to just get back to the net. So serve here down 11-20. Switch it up here. Kyle Compton's going to serve it for the match. Coming back in at 2011 here. Notice that you have to win on your serve. They'll Kyle still continue Compton. to play four points each in each rotation. Oh, what a shot there, but it sails out. Drew Holder leaped. Wasn't able to get it. And he is glad he could not quite <laughs> reach not, that one. You're not kidding. It's 12-20. I thought that looked like it was out, but he it did said for it was me, in. But Kyle thought it was good, and Drew confirmed it with the thumbs up. I don't know if we're going to get a replay or not. Let's see the close call replay. Yeah, it, it was in. definitely good. Great shot. Oh, good hands there by Holder. Man, that was fantastic hands by Drew Holder. That ball tipped off the top of the net. He was able to keep his composure and get it back. Compton hits it out. And Holder will serve down 13-20. That goes out too. So Southeastern not backing down up 14-20. And this really is going to be exciting with uh, Fiorella Bazzetto taking on Luke Anthony. This is going to be fun. 14-20. Good serve there by Luke Anthony. That was too deep in the backhand in the net. Fiorella going to serve for the match. 2014 in the Dream Breaker. We're tied here. Semi-final number one. They hit an out ball there. And that one goes to the net and Clemson does it. Fiorella Bazzetto able to finish it off and Clemson is going to go to the finals. Mark, 21-14, I'm surprised. That was great. Clemson turned it up. I think it really came down to singles play and athleticism. I think we see why Clemson's been here before. They now advance to the championships. They won this thing last year over JMU. So uh, they're going to get a chance here after we see this next match to uh, go back to back. We will be back for semifinal number two in Picklin Social.
At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS Active Recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS. Yeah. yeah. Let's, go. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I, go the hardest. I bring the pain. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. Uh. I just gotta go hard. out these new gamma paddles. Yo, I gotta try that paddle. Here you go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Play with style. Play with quantum by Gamma Pickleball. Your duper.
Well, welcome back to the 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. And Mark, we got Florida one taking on Florida two. And I know the folks in the far court serving first, that's Adele Dorian. She's playing with Lauren Hayashi, but I don't have notes on these two players closest to us. So, oh. So it's, uh, okay, so it's uh, Laura Falfito Font and her partner is Martina Sunstead, I think, is who we have playing with her today. Can't even see it. So they must have quite some pickleball going on down there at Florida to have two teams here in the semifinals. Teams from all over the country have come to participate in this Georgia Super Regional. The top four teams from today's action compete in the Nationals in Houston, Texas in November. We've already had one of our final participants decided in the earlier match as Clemson uh, defeated Southeastern. So Clemson is awaiting the winner of Florida number one and Florida number two. So I'm not sure what the delay is. Maybe a maybe they don't know who's playing either. But it is uh, Lauren Hayashi serving here to Lara Falcido Font. Mm, Falcido Font just in the net there. As we've discussed a couple of times today, you'll notice we are playing rally scoring. Rally scoring is where the point is earned on every rally, unlike traditional scoring, where you must be serving to win a point. Uh, players also stay on their same side of this court. The only time they can switch is on a timeout or the changeover. We're playing to 21. We'll switch sides at 11. And you must win the final point on your serve. Good aggressive play there by Lauren Hayashi. So what, you're doing something if you're getting it past uh, Martine Sunston. She's got some long arms there in the center of the court. Hayashi serving up three to two. So the format for today's matches, uh, we play five lines. Uh, we play a women's doubles match, a men's doubles match, followed by two mixed doubles matches. It's the first team to win three lines, wins the match. If we happen to be tied 2-2, we go to what's called the Dream Breaker. And that is uh, where the teams will come out and play singles with each player on the team rotating in at four points each to decide the match. That's what we had in the last match as we saw Clemson pull off the Dream. Man, that was, that was awesome. First semifinal, and you get a Dream Breaker. Florida won here, tied up with Florida two. Serving in the near court here is Martine Sunston. Tied up 4-4. That one sails long there for Adele Dorian. This is Lara Salfido Font. Well, the one thing we know for sure in the finals, we're gonna have the Tigers versus the Gators. That is true. Absolutely right about that. Lauren Hayes, she's got really, really good hands. Saw her playing earlier today. She's quick at the net. She can just get up there. And great shot, good touch there by Talcito Folk. Florida too with the international flair as uh, Laura is from Spain and Martina originally from Norway, although she has lived in Orlando, Florida for 12 years. Oh, great shot there, good recovery by Adele Dorian. Ball popped up off the top of the net and two-handed backhand and she put it away. Man, good hands. And we talked about it earlier. Just kind of throws you off timing. Everything goes off when it just barely nicks the net and then you got to redirect the shot. Great job of control there by Dorian. Here comes aggressive Florida. One. 
Uh, wow. There by Hayashi. And the ladies are on fire here. That's some crazy women's pickleball right there. Good play and nice two-handed backhands with power. See that two-handed backhand from the tennis translating over into some crazy good pickleball. Great shot there by Talpi Zofon. It's interesting, Peter. You know, if we would have been commentating this two years ago, nobody was hitting the two-handed backhand. You're right about except that. Except for some of the top ladies. Uh, now you're seeing everybody, men, ladies, everybody is yep. saying, hey, we got to have that two-handed backhand. It makes it better for resets. Um, really interesting to see how this game continues to develop. As, as you say that, there was four two-handed backhand shots in a row. Great hands there and a two-handed backhand put away there by Falfito Font. And man, that's strong. So she sped the ball at cross court. A lot of times we say speed up in front of you, go soft cross court, but that time the speed up right at the body was very Great effective. Put away there. Dorian, again, the two-handed backhand mark. It's a weapon. I can't do that. Might be something you have to add to that game, Peter. <laughs> I don't there's know always there's that. always opportunity, my friend. I like my duper rating where it is. This is the premier collegiate championships brought to you by Duper. It's been an exciting week for Duper. As Duper is now the one official uh -huh. rating for all of pickleball as they announced the uh, partnership with PPA and MLP and the United Pickleball State Championships. Uh, players have finally got what they wanted is one rating for everything. Torian puts it in the net here. All tied up at nine. Florida one playing Florida two. And uh, Some gator on gator action here at Pickle and Social in Great Buford. shot, two-handed backhand by Dorian. She's wearing out this line coming right at us. Great job of keeping yeah. it deep here. Good patience on both sides. That one was out. Yeah, I thought so too. Tough luck. It's going to be 11 to 9. They'll switch sides and markets slow and steady. I think wins the race here as quick and as fast as they want to get up there in the net and do that. I think they got to slow it down a little here. Yeah, I think I think we'll yeah, see the team that can just slow that, it. See that replay. Uh, great replay was, action oh, from yeah. our camera work here. That ball was out. Yeah, great call. So, you know, tough to see that standing behind it too. So, uh, very, very good play. Our replay good job, continues team. to work wonders here. So, looks awesome. It's nice having this technology. Duper's gone on all out on this. You know, here had a world class facility. Pickle and Social opened back in December. Here with six indoor courts, eight outdoor courts. Finest food and beverage you will find around. If you happen to be in the Northeast Georgia area near Buford, you need to come check this place out. Actually, I guess I'd say it'd, it'd really be worth flying in to see this place. Heck yeah. As all these teams did. We had teams all from all over coming here. So now we got four to one closest to us. Yep, it is. Lauren Hayashi serving with an 11 9 lead, serving cross court there to Laura Talpito Fonk. A little miscommunication there, and they tap paddles and it sails out. Be a 12 9 lead. Dorian serving. That one's pretty close, too. Great angle there. Great it's overhead. Sunstein unable to return that one. Back pedaling. It's a tough shot. Your eyes are moving. You're trying to move backwards and trying to hit a ball being smoked at you. 13-9 lead for Florida one. Into the net is Dorian. Martina Sunston serving as you said. He lived in Orlando for about 12 years. Put away there by Lauren Hayashi and that was smooth looking. I think the first strategy we might go with is not to lob her way. I don't think so. 
she seems to really be able to put away those uh, overheads. Kind of tennis background does Hayashi. You can tell that was a first serve right there. Ball was smashed right down the middle. And now 14-11 for Florida one. Falfito Font serving. Ooh, me. Hayashi may have hit an out ball. I don't know. I think one thing I'd like to see here, too, is just if they would maybe try to slow down the serves a little bit and concentrate on a little bit more depth. I think all these all these ladies have strong tennis backgrounds, and I've found that when everybody has strong tennis backgrounds, uh, you know, you're really not going to hit a serve that's going to uh, intimidate them too much. So really working on that depth even slower might get you a shorter return uh, that then you can do some work on your third shot. Dorian unable to land it in down the line there, but really good defense there in Florida too. Well, maybe a miss hit, but she got away with it. Another lob up to Adele, and that one sails out. Again, like so on that last point, we saw that serve hit in the front half of the server's box, which immediately put the serving team deep in return. I'd like to see if they could flip that with a deep serve. Uh, they're, they're calling a timeout now to go talk about my strategy over there. So. I'm trying to give them here from the. <laughs> there you go. Just say a little louder. It's 15 13. Give me timeout here for Florida 2. Falfita Font and Martina Sunston going to talk it over with her teammates. Yep, so both teams get two timeouts. Um, as we talked about, we've had some great instant replay today. Uh, they can challenge a call. If you challenge a call and it's, uh, in, your challenge is incorrect, you do lose a timeout. The other interesting thing in this format when we're playing rally scoring, Peter, is that the players can choose to switch sides when they come out of the timeout if they want to. We have yet to see that today in all the action that we've, uh, we've watched, that no one's used that strategy. It's uh, been interesting to me we haven't seen that. Yep, it's uh, something to think about for sure, like you said, and we mentioned it in that Dream Breaker. I mean, uh, in the uh, match before, right before the Dream Breaker about switching up late to have maybe a different look on the serve just to s switch it. And if you have, still have your, both your timeouts, you could switch back if you wanted to. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, you get a look here from this side, how intimidating Martina Sunston is at the net right there. I don't know how anybody could possibly try to lob over her. They yeah. clap paddles again, a little miscommunication. Point for Florida one. Dorian Hayashi with a 16-13 lead. Hayashi is bound and determined to hit it through them, and uh, they were up to the task. There's just too much. There's a brick wall there by Sunson and Falfia Font. It's, it's really hard to win when you're at the baseline and your opponent's at the non-volley zone line. Yeah. Great shot there. A perfect angle out of the reach of Falfia Font. And it'll be Florida 1 serving 17-14. If you're watching at home and you want one strategy tip, my first tip would be is play the first half of the point to get to the non-volley zone line. Then when you get to the non-volley zone line, then play to win the point. A little aggressive there by Dorian, but just barely catches the top of the net. Delfino Font. Serve really good deep serve and a really good deep return. Great misdirection, and that proves you right there. Just get it back. Adele popped it up a little bit, but I'm able to put it away. It's Talfito Font in Florida 1. The first opponent you have on the court is the net, so you got to get that ball over the net to give your opponents the chance to do something with it. Oh, good hands there by Talfito Font. See two net courts back to back. The tick rally ends and the ball rolling off the top of the net and it's 19-15 for Florida one. That's that's heartbreaking. It's tough. The good patience there, they went back and forth and then to end it on that. It's a heartbreaker. 19-15. 
Great try. Great try. Just a little too much touch by Falfito Fonk. I just amazed at the athleticism of everybody here. It's great. A lot of maybe tennis converts, but I think a lot of people that just love the game. Great shot and wicked <laughs> two-handed backhand by Adele Dorian down the line, and she's hit a number of those. She is, owns that corner right there. Annalie Waters has made that shot famous. <laughs> she just uh, took it over and made it her own right there. I'll tell you what, Adele Dorian is wicked with that, and I say that, and she hits the top of the net. 17-20, 4-2, trying to... It's a tough one. I'd like to see when you got that lead in game point that you really put the pressure on your opponents to make the error. I know some people go the opposite strategy and think that's where you can sort of go all out, but I uh, think most points, even at this level, are one-off unforced errors, so I just really like seeing keeping that ball over the net. Game point here. Excuse me. <laughs> trying to get it, get it back for a game point. They're going to call a timeout. Yeah, we're back all knotted up at 19-20 now. We, like we've talked about that rally score and you get back into it in a hurry. Uh, if people are wondering what they're watching. When you get to game point at 20, you have to win on your serve. So Florida 1's been trying to close it out as Florida 2 is uh, snuck right back in this thing to make it 2019 to see who gets to face the Clemson Tigers at some point. I like this timeout. I think it's a really good timeout. I think it's uh, yeah, okay. just slow, slow the game down, you, you, you know, serving down by one or up by one. Either well, way, I mean, you don't get to carry him over with you, so. Yeah. Would affect maybe a challenge call later, but I mean, it's not only three, two or three points Tom left. Richardson, who knows? Or, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you there, but Tom Richardson, our referee, letting everybody know there are no timeouts remain. <laughs> Florida two serve in 1920. Speed up goes at Dorian and she clips the top of the net and it's going to be a tie game 2020. What a comeback. So now at 2020, this point's going to count for somebody. And great hands, balance. So they all worked yourself in the non-volleys online. All four players there now. Oh, double two-handed backhand tips off the end, edge of the paddle there of Dorian. And it's 21-20. Four to two, trying to serve it out. Falfito Fonk serving. That's going to be wide, and that's going to be the game. That's a tough way for Hayashi to end it because she played so well in that match. But Florida, two didn't back down. And they uh, came out and took a very impressive 4 to 2, 22 to 20. Lead, yeah. So they got a 1 0 lead in this semifinal number two. We'll be back for the next one. We don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS active recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS.
Pickleball fans, we're back at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. It's a sunny, windy day, but we're nice and cool inside here at Pickle and Social. Mark, we are watching the, the men's match. It's going to be the second one of semifinal number two. Again, it's four to one in Florida two. Florida one's team is Christian Frank and excuse me, Christian Frank and Maxwell Rule. They're going to face off against uh, Florida number two. And this is Jake Bauer and Django Chasong. And these guys look quick. Really interesting. So for those that are tuning in, just the format today with uh, each match consists of five lines or five games, however you want to call it. So it's going to be uh, a women's doubles followed by a men's doubles, then two mixed doubles. Um, goal is to win three out of five. If by chance we end up tied at 2-2, two -two, then we play what's called the dream breaker and they'll come back out to play singles. Notice this is two Florida Gator teams. One team donning the Florida Gator blue and one team donning that Gator orange. Uh, trying to earn the right to come on and take the Clemson Tigers. It would be an all orange final if... I guess Clemson could wear their purple. True. But I agree with you, it would be an all orange final. So again, this is the men's doubles match. Second match of... This is semifinal number two. And it is an all Florida matchup. Looks like Maxwell is going to start out serving for us here. So he's talking with Tom Richardson, our referee. Tom is a very well known referee. Uh, referees on the professional tour. And Certified, travels all around the country, calling the action. Also lucky to have a replay here today at the booth. Teams uh, can challenge a call. However, if they were to uh, get the challenge wrong, they would lose a timeout. I think they have two challenges per game. Only outside line calls are able to be challenged. They get the challenge right, they get to keep it, and they use it again. If they get it wrong, they lose the challenge and the timeout. Our strong production team over here is the one that gets the final say on whether that ball's in or out. They've and been they've doing been the first-class job all day. Been spot on today. Having some conversation. Going over the rules or something here, and we can get started. Maxwell Rule is going to get us going. All four players right-handed. So I always think tough. Ooh. Around the post, and we got our first ATP, Maxwell Rule. Great shot. Good patience there. And he just waited, 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 was able to put it in. That's the key to that shot, is just waiting on the ball to get outside that post. Christian Frank serving here to Django Chisong. Chisong keeping it back deep there on these overheads. Rule unable to put it back in, and it's a 1-1 game now. Jake Bowers, great hands. Got a little excited there, got it back, but Christian Frank able to get it back again and take the point. Florida won with a 2-1 lead early here. Game number two. The lob up over Jake Bowers and he hits it out. It's a tough shot. I don't know if I could lob over any of these athletic guys here. And they got some length, tall, moving around good. I think they're really seeing respect for each other as they're all going really slow right here and trying to set the ball up. Yeah, said no that time. Jake Bowers handles the speed up. 
Well, I think that's the one thing we all have to decide as players, are we the attacker or counter-attacker? And uh, these guys are great counter-attacks. I think sometimes when you know people are great counter-attackers, you have to wait a little bit longer to attack till you get something that you can really attack with. Again, that ball was below the net. Went for sort of the yeah, premature good, attack. Yeah. Four to one in the bottom of your screen in blue. Four to two in the orange on top of your screen. Good hands there by Christian Frank, and he gets it to hit the back line. And it's a 5-2 lead for Florida one. there by four to one. Jake Bowers with a backhand dink. A little too strong. It's a little bit of nerves there on the other side of the court. That one sails long on Django Chisong. Might not be a bad time to take a timeout. Just slow the game down, take a breath. You got two of them, you can't take them with you. Made a couple unforced mistakes. Good hands there by Bowers. Frank unable to get it back. But it's a game of runs. I like your idea on a timeout, though. I don't think it ever hurts. Uh, about a third of the way through your game to sort of good or bad to take timeout and to make sure you and your partner are on the same side of what's working or not working. Then save that other timeout for a crucial situation. The 8 3, 9 3 lead now. Mm. Switch sides at 11, so they're going to get a break anyways. Yeah, that's when I wonder now if they've let it go so long with their yeah. better off just waiting till the break. That goes out. It's a game of runs. They say it works both ways, and especially in rally scoring, it can uh, can really help you out, and it can hurt you too. Well, we saw that in the ladies' match for sure. Saw a team with the big lead, and the other back. team came back. So. Good backhand by Django Chisong. Christian Frank couldn't get it back in the backhand. 4 to 2 serving down 4 10. Well, switch sides here at 11 4. And I think this is this will be good for Florida 2. So the players are communicating here. I like the fact that they're talking. You're trying to think about what's working, what's not working. I think just had maybe a little bit of case of nerves as it started here. I think so. I think so. Uh, Jake Bowers kind of got pumped up on that hand battle that he ended up ultimately losing. And just kind of wheels started rolling off a little bit. Yeah. Now we're going to see some good action here. I mean, these four top players, uh, four of the top collegiate pickleball players in the country here battling in the Georgia Super Regional. Chance to go to nationals. Sales on just song. If you're not familiar with this format, there's uh, eight super regionals, four teams from each regional advances to the nationals that will be in Houston, Texas in November. There's also 16 campus events where the winner advances and then 16 other bids to be determined. So 64 teams will be competing at nationals for $32,000 in prize money there. And we got $6,000 in scholarship money on the line here today, Peter. That's a, that's a whole lot of cash. Super doing a good job again of supporting these student athletes. Got to love what they're doing. Really growing the game on a, on a high level. I mean, these guys are fantastic athletes. That one sails out. Good hands by Chisong. Chisong. Back and forth there with Rule and Frank. Four to two serving, six twelve. Got what he wanted. Nice third shot drop. Got the pop-up, and then it just hit the top of the net on the put away. Serve sails out right at us. This rally scoring, that does earn the team a point. Every rally earns a point. 
see the winning team about to be the net right now. We've got to get these players concentrate getting that ball over the net. We've talked about it several times today, but the first opponent out here is the net. Got to get that ball over the net. Some good patience here. Goes around the post. Defended well by Bowers. What a good point. That was a great point. Nice patience. I think we just took a timeout here. I think Florida, too, did try to call a timeout. They're trailing 15 to 7. So, 4 to 1, able to come out and just make a statement. Punch him in the face early. As, as Bowers called that timeout, he was walking to the other side of the court. So I don't know if that was where he just wanted to go or whether he was uh, maybe giving us a preview that we might have our first side switch on the timeout today. Maybe. We'll see. We Tom. shall see. So Maxwell Rule and Christian Frank really just kind of playing consistent, patient pickleball and attacking when they've had chances. Yeah, it's interesting. So they have, they've been playing patient. And I, I don't know, maybe if I'm Florida two here, I might start trying to attack a little bit earlier, but I really got to be selective about the ball. Uh, the counter attacks aren't exactly working right now. Again, we've talked about it all the time is the depth. I really like to see deep returns here to try to pin them back. So. Christian Frank serving 15-7. He gets the lob early and a good one and nothing. It's hard to defend that. Got, could a do. got a nice deep return and then just hit a beautiful top spin lob. Good return of serve there into the net was Christian Frank and the Florida two serve and eight sixteen. One thing I would say about that lob going back to it though is if you're playing somebody and you see that they're hitting that nice top spin lob, go to that back end on the return. A lot harder to hit the back end lob, top spin lob than it is the forehand. Good hands there by Bowers. Just a little flick of the wrist and in between Rule and Frank, perfect placement. 9-16. Good speed up, good hands. I think it was out too. He called it out. Could always challenge it, have the replay system in place. I think we're gonna get a challenge here, it looks like. May or may not. They get, mm. they get to look at it. There is a challenge. Crew on it, and it looks like it is. Looks like it's going to be called out here. Yeah, looks like it was out. That great work. Well done. Well done there on the close call replay. We have had no missed calls from the replay here. Beautiful work. That is fantastic. I just can't imagine having the, uh, those resources well, when you were in college. Yeah, what's great for the replay team is after they make their decision, they put it up on the big screen here in the facility for the whole, uh, good stuff. everybody to confirm, so. Uh, good work. Getting back to the patient, back and forth. Oh, that's a really good backhanded aggressive dink from the corner. Great shot there by Django Chisong, but read well by Frank. So 19-9, playing to 21. Big drives there by Frank. Oh, a little miscommunication there. Yeah, took off the edge of Jake Bauer's paddle and it's gonna be serving for the mat the game here. Game number two, Florida two leads one to nothing. So he's trying to even it up here. 
Oh, man, that is unlucky. Great form in that overhead, but it hit the top of the man. net, rolled off. That's going to do it for game number two. Evens it up, as I said. We'll be back with the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regionals from Pickland Social. by Gamma Pickleball. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS Active Recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS. Welcome back, Pickleball fans. I'm Peter Jezernak, along with Mark Spackman. We are set for game number three, four to one, playing floor to two in semifinal number two here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. Mark, we're uh, getting ready to We've seen all four of these players play already. This is mixed match number one. And then they'll switch it up and do it again. And if we're still tied, it'll be the dream breaker as we saw in semifinal number one. But what do you think about this matchup? Well, I'll tell you what I think. There must be some crazy pickleball going on down there at that University of Florida Gainesville. campus. All these uh, uh, young student athletes coming up here. I've just been so impressed to field two teams uh, that both make it to the, uh, the semifinals here. Uh, both fighting for the right to take on Clemson and the championships. Clemson is going to be trying to defend their championship from the last Georgia Regional. Trying to go back to back. So, uh, I don't know. Been super uh, impressed so far. As we've talked about before, we're playing five lines. Uh, we play a women's doubles, a men's doubles, two mixed doubles. And then if it's tied up 2-2, two -two, we would go to a dream record. This is the game number three, which is going to be our mixed doubles match. Adele Dorian going to get us started. Referee says go. We're off. Man. Oh, off the back line and then off the top of the net to start. Off the net, off the arm, and sails yeah. long. Florida one. Christian Frank serving for Florida one. That took a funny bounce. Good hands there. To even get it back, Django. Pressure from Frank early for Florida one. Oh, great hands, that was out. Good call there by Frank. Tough luck for Django. I like Django going behind him though. Christian's getting really aggressive, covering a lot of the court. So good. a good strategy, try to keep him honest, going back behind him there. Another challenge call, and our guys in the booth are grinning ear to ear. They love this. I thought it was a good call. It looks to me like that's out, Mark. 
I'm going to leave this one up to the replay officials because I can't tell that one might be on the line. I don't know what. I think what it's say. good. So. I thought it was out. Ball was ruled in. Oh. Oh, it was ruled in. Yeah, I think. No, Peter, it, was I out. Think it was out. He caught it out over there. <laughs> Everybody in the crowd getting a chance to see it, but. Okay, they did call it out. You're correct. Yeah, I agree with that. I thought it was out. Hey, good I, call. Hey, I trust I trust our experts here, so I'm good with that. It's so so close here. We're good. I just misunderstood the communication. It was going with what I thought I heard. So maybe it was out or in. Tough job being that replay official over there. What I was going to say, though, I really like Django going behind him. Even with the ball being out, I think that puts the thought in Christian's head that he's just got to be careful. And there we see it go behind him again. Laura Falfi with a great shot, like I said, right behind him. He's really crashing the middle, trying to take on most of the court. That one's a little too high. He He can do that a lot. He's good at that. Adele Dorian with the serve here. Serve is leading four to two. Big overhands here by Django. And then he hits a soft one out. Just got to get it back. Yeah, just keep Gotta that keep ball going back. back. Notice those lobs here, which are, you know, we're playing in an indoor facility here, and you can lob as high as you want to. These ceilings are nice and high. It's one of the premier pickleball facilities in the country, Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. Frank going after Falthiza Font, and she was up for the task, getting it back each time. Good hands, and she's definitely excited about that. Go recover the ball coming back. We are playing Did with the. you think the that ball was in? I agree. I think it was more than halfway out. I thought it was a good call. I'm going to go with you, Peter. All right. You seem to usually get it right. Oh, yeah. I don't know about all that. Good overhead there by Frank. Adele serving 6-3. One forced air there by Falcito Funk. Turn right on the line. Good shot there by Frank it's going all the way to the other line and then speeds it up. Good read there by Django, just unable to get it back. Very interesting strategy here. It's very similar to the pro Major League Pickleball game. You can have one player on a team that can really keep you in it. You know, if you Frank played the left side in the men's match, now he's playing left side and mixed. And then a lot of court. If Dorian's going to come to you that after that. That was uh, impressive. Good misdirection. Great shot right down the line. Dorian knows her role. Hey, when you let me hit one, I'm going to hit it for a winner. <laughs> You're right. It's going to be a timeout here. Not sure. I think they're Some trying strategizing. to strategize Yeah, how, how to make him not to be effective. I think they have to try to go behind him a little bit more. Maybe soft. Get him on that side of the court. You did go behind him there, and it was out. The other thing I'd like him to see, I'd like to see them return serve to him, make him hit the third stay to keep him in the back of the court. Back, yeah. Return to him why keep him back, open up that court for his partner, but you know, hey. That was definitely out. I think they listened to us there. Oh, tough luck. Really good two-handed backhand, just catches the top of the net. The guys just quit, Peter. Man, <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh, 
It's a really good drop and actually a pretty good speed up there by Frank. Gets up high on Falthito Font, but she's all right. Knocking over cameras here. Sorry, guys. So we get a switch. We switch at 11. So we're playing to 21. Uh, as we've talked about, rally scoring. So every rally earns a point. Duper does a great job with their collegiate championships, the premier collegiate event. Started back in 2022 with 16 schools, 150 players. Second national championship was last year with 30 schools and 360 players. And the 2024 is going to be held in Houston, Texas in November. I'm sure we're going to see those numbers probably double, if not more, the way this Man, thing's growing. It's awesome. I mean, not just pickleball growing, but what a fabulous job Duper does of running yeah. these events. I mean, this is just a first-class event they're putting on. First-class production crew they brought in with Boxcar Productions over here just doing a first-class job. So uh, just happy that we can be a part. This is good. I am Peter Jezernak. We're hearing from Mark Spackman. I'm glad to be here. Out. Laura yeah, unable to get be. that two hands up high enough to be able to hit that one. Yeah, and I don't think Christian Frank needs any introduction. He has sort of taken over this match. Oh, I jinxed him. To, yeah, I was saying, unable to get that one over. Christian Frank. I'm sorry, Janko, Janko Chisong. We hear the crowd Great goes shot. wild. That was the point of the day so far that here. Was, of course. They stayed in it, kept fighting, getting those overheads back, and we're able to flip the switch the opposite way, and Django hits the winner. Great shot, Django. I think they're holding up a second so everybody can watch the instant replay here in the facility. I'd want to see that one again, too. Tough shot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over here. My bad. Calling the wrong name. Moving cameras. So sorry. Yeah, let's go. She wants that one back. Like that she match just came nice up a little up. short. This match has gotten tightened up as it can happen in rally scoring at that changeover. I think that strategy has really changed over here. You know, Laura's going after that backhand when she can on Christian. I think where they've been most effective when Laura can get that forehand and hit that forehand drive to Christian's backhand. She's listening to some pop-ups that's getting Django on the point, but. Ooh. We should, we should really should call her Dr. Falfito Font. Oh, okay. She's now a doctor. Impressive. She just defended her PhD dissertation. So not only a fantastic athlete and wonderful pickleball player, she's a doctor. She unfortunately can't get that two-handed backhand to fall. We are tight now. It's 14-10 here, so it's all tightened up here. This match can go either way. Fifteen ten. Four to one. Trying to take a two one lead here in semifinal number two. Great hands there by Fal Dr. Falfito Funk. Just catches Christian Frank handcuffed a little bit. Oh. 
side out here to Florida one. It's going to be Adela Dorian serving 16-11. They're really trying to stretch him out and make him move as far that way as they can. Twelve sixteen. He's all over there. Great hustle there by Django. Christian Frank all over the place. That's just all over the place. athleticism out the wazoo right there. For, for sure, not taking anything away, but he, I think he hit eight balls on that point. Every single one was a forehand. They're going to have to figure out some way to get it to the backhand, make him play a backhand at some point in here. Skips right in the line. Great shot there. Thirteen seventeen. Django serving serves it out. Tough luck there. Trying to find that back end. He's he slid over in that line, making it tough. Big overhands by Django. I think the key to that was they made him hit two backhands to set up the point. I think they just have to really concentrate and force it over to that side, hoping it will open up the court. And the there it is again. Couldn't get that forehand over. It'll be 15, 18. Four to two. Trying to come back here. Good shot around the post there by Adele. Good, Impressive. good patience right there. She waited and waited. And just surprised him with the backhand. Django unable to get it back. Lob over Dr. Falti the phone goes out. You can really see Christian Frank working. He's sweating. Carrying a brunt of the load here, unforced error there by Adele. And Jenga's gonna serve here down 17 19, so trying to come back. And good shot, perfect placement by Jenga. Easy backhand. That was nice, a real, a lot of paddle control there. Stuck it out there and just held it right in front, punched it right where he wanted to go. That's pretty. Althea Font serving down 18-19. And that's a great shot. Tough, wicked little bounce. Had a lot of spin on it, I think. Gets under the paddle of Django. He looks at it like it might be cracked. So we have a game point for Florida One here. Remember, you must win the match on your serve. Adele Dorian serving. Oh. And that's going to do it. Just a little bit too much Christian Frank there. And Florida one, able to take a 2-1 lead here. We're going to go to match number four. It'll be the second mixed doubles match when we come back.
a true duper. At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOS and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOS Active Recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOS. People play pickleball for exercise, competition, or to hang out with friends. What your reason is doesn't matter to Gamma. What matters is that you play, that you enjoy playing with passion, and you have so much fun, you can't wait to play again. At Gamma, we offer paddles perfect for all levels, including yours, because pickleball is about you, the player, and what feels right. Pickleball is your game. Make Gamma your paddle. Play to live. Li we are back. It's match number four. Four to one leads. Two games to one. We're going to have Florida two, Jake Bauer and Martina Sunston taking on for Florida one, Laura Hayashi, Lauren Hayashi and Maxwell Rule. Kim, we've seen all four of these players play Mark, and I'm sure they know each other well, both of them coming from the University of Florida. What do you think about this matchup? I think the first thing we see is going to be interesting is, um, you know, both both of these male players played on the right side in the men's match. So uh, will one, uh, one of them switch over and play on the left side or both of them play on the left side? I can't really tell from warm-ups yet. But um, so because we saw the, the last match, Christian Frank really took over by playing that left side and carrying the court, sort of being that uh, doing his best Ben Johns impression. Um, so will that happen again here? Um, all, I mean, phenomenal athletes all the way around. These ladies are holding their own. I mean, I just, this Man. pickleball down here in the Florida University campus, I mean, University of Florida campus, just amazing. Whatever they're doing in Gainesville, keep doing it because it's working. Yeah, I think they said they brought five teams. Is this the school that brought five teams up here? I think. It could have been. Uh, so, so, but uh, these are the. You know, the top two battling out for a chance to play Clemson. Yeah, Clemson's been waiting uh, for a little while now after winning their first semifinal match against Southeastern. Clemson is also the defending Georgia regional champ. So, so we will definitely are going to have a Clemson Tiger and Florida Gator final. We're just waiting to see who's going to be representing the Florida Gators. Yes, sir. Looks like... Uh, Jake Bauer is going to play the left side for Florida 2 to answer half of your question. Yeah, it looks like both teams are going to go with a more traditional female on the right, male on the left. Uh, one thing we've talked about in this format, you can switch sides at a timeout or in the changeover. We've yet to see a team switch sides today, but maybe we'll see that at some point if necessary. Lauren Hayashi going to get us started here for Florida One. She's playing again with Maxwell Rule. Maxwell's playing on the left side here. Coach Tom Richardson says, play, serve it up. And Lauren Hayashi does. Worse. One point in here, four to two, one nothing lead. Great start for Bauer there as he steps right in and takes charge. Good shot there by uh, uh, Maxwell Rule. Just a flip of the wrist. Forehand, a little too high. He can put that one away, I'm sure, nine times out of 10, or 99 times out of 100. This is interesting. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing out of Bauer starting out. I mean, I felt like in the men's match, he's a little tentative. It may have been because he's over on the right side. It seems like now that he's on the left side, he's much more comfortable. He does. Seem and more uh, sort of in his zone over there. Just looks like a whole uh, new uh, persona over there. So I think we're going to have quite a match here. Really good hustle. 
could get cross court. Sails out on him though. I love how encouraging all these players are to each other, good or bad. I mean, they've just been all so supportive of each other on the court, on the sidelines. See it right in front of us. That one sails just a little bit long there on Bauer. Bauer's a junior journalism major. His biggest pickleball achievement it was a second in Del Rey in the pro singles. Bauer, a big time singles player. You can see how quick he is there at the net. He got excited there. That could come in handy here if we get the 2 2 and get to see that no dream doubt. breaker. I'll tell you, he's, he is quick on the court there. And unforced error there, Martina Sunston hits it into the net on her serve. Ties the game up here. It'll be Lauren Hayashi serving for Florida one. Florida one with a 2-1 lead here. A little strong there by Bauer. And it's 5-4. Unlucky, Maxwell Rule, unfortunately hit that top of the net. I tell you, to your point, you said at the beginning of this match, um, there is not that Ben Johns dominance by the other player, you know what I mean? They're, they're not covering nearly as much court as That's Christian, Christian Frank, Frank did in the last game. I mean, for sure, but these ladies are, um, are, are strong pickleball players and they, uh, their role's a little different than what, you know, uh, Adele Dorian's role was. She played 10% of the court, well, you know. These guys, I mean, these ladies are just have a, have a different role and I think they're filling it well. well. You have to have the player that can do that. I mean, covering all that court is not easy. Um, and if, you, if you're not capable of doing it and you try to do it, you're hurting your team more, you know, more. So sometimes you just have to trust your, your partner. Great shot, oh, it's uh, just out. That's Absolutely fantastic out. hands by Lauren Hayashi. That was three hard, hard overhands that she was able to get back. And you see Jake Bauer put his fingers together and say it was just out. That one sails out too. So, no. I would have sworn that Lauren Hayashi after that point was had a little background in table tennis. She does just tennis and basketball. But I like to see that she's a foodie. I think we've all played a little bit of ping pong in those dorms. No, oh, yes, true, so very true. Probably got, probably got some action there somewhere. Really, really great hands there by Hayashi. She serves tied 8-8. Eight, eight. Just about to say, I love the patience of Martina. She, I mean, she's just steady. It's just back. Just get it over. Just get it over. Rule serving the 9 8 lead. Great hands there by Bauer, but too much strength from Hayashi. Seems like Bauer and Sunston have lost a little bit of the aggression they were showing at the start of the match. I uh, like the idea of slowing it down, but I want them to pounce on those balls when they can and attack. Their hands are so quick. It's so athletic. It's 11-8 now, so we're going to switch sides here. And uh, I, I, I agree with your point there, Mark. I think there's um, uh, the attacking part of it. They're not, not, they're not as aggressive as they were just a few points ago. 
So I'm sure they're talking about the changeover, trying to figure out. I mean, this match is still, you know, super super tight, 11-8. I mean, what a beautiful facility here, Peter. I don't think we can talk about it enough. We're at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia, one of the premier pickleball facilities in the country. I mean, if you haven't been here, you got to check it out. I mean, they have pickleball, cornhole, table tennis, uh, outdoor lawn area where they can have live music, uh, six indoor courts, eight outdoor pickleball courts, uh, first class chef with the top food and beverage menu. Um, check it out online, pick on social or, you know. It is uh, way here. the food. I've seen these chicken fingers. It looks like three chickens. Yes, yeah, I huge. saw that. Also, they look delicious. Also saw that uh, those corn uh, riblets or corn ribs that oh, they had man. or whatever that came out to here. So it's some good looking food. Uh, we're going to have to grab some dinner after we wrap this thing up. For sure. Nice two-handed backhand rip down the middle. That was in. I didn't think that was in, but maybe I just completely missed it. You can watch it on the replay up here. I missed it again. Good shot either way. It's definitely counting as it was in. Um, score 12 10. It is. Just out there, Maxwell Rule. Couldn't get it to land in. They kept Hayashi and Rule back. And Bauer was aggressive and were able to get a point. Two-handed backhand in the net. Ball goes back over to Rule, serving 13-11. like Martina Sunston took a little off that one. A change up, I don't think Hayashi was ready for it. So again, these two teams from University of Florida are competing for the chance to take on the Clemson Tigers in the finals today. It's been a weekend full of pickleball here at Pickle and Social. Teams from all over the country have come and we've got it down to three teams left. They have. And uh, like you said, it's definitely gonna be Florida and Clemson. Oh, great shot there by Maxwell Rule and out of the reach, Jake Bauer. That was a perfectly placed shot. Thornton Hayashi serving 14-13. So 14-14, and we have a challenge here. Is the alcohol in the serve? Well, the only challenges we can have is on the outside line calls. So I think everybody's wondering where that is to figure out where it is. So teams are allowed to challenge. If they challenge they, and they have it incorrectly, they would lose their time out. Go to the rules here. Only outside line calls will be able to be challenged. Each team gets two video challenges per game. If you get the challenge right, you keep the challenge and get to use it again later in the game. If you get the challenge wrong, you lose the challenge and your timeout if you have one. Our production team here is the one that will be making the final decisions on the calls. In essence, each team can make two incorrect challenges per game. As soon as you get the second challenge wrong, you lose the ability to challenge for the rest of the game. I think there's some confusion on which line call they're challenging. Important time for this here as we're all knotted up at 14-14. The ball is called out. It was out, I guess. I, again, I don't know if it was the side out. Oh, yeah, that was the side out over here. Not on the serve. Not on the serve. Oh, it was definitely out, yep. Good job here by the production team and Jake Bauer able to get low and knock that one over for a side out. Unforced error there by 
I think after what you're telling Maxwell. me about Jake Bauer's singles experience, he's hoping that they can force a, uh, a win here to force a dream breaker and him get to show off some single skills. That's what it's looking like. I have a feeling that all eight of these players have some serious oh, yeah. single skills. Great attacks there. And Jake Bowers fired up. It's kind of how we saw him in the first part of the game. So may have talked about it at the switch. 4-2 with an 18-14 lead, and that skips off the top of the net. And was in, I guess. Couldn't see. That was right where the post is. But it's 19-14 for 4-2. Jake Bauer they serving. They turned it on. Yeah, they really have. Great misdirection there by Hay Hayashi. And she's able to set that up for a point, and I can really see it right here. Like, we were sitting watching her eyes. Great shot by Lauren Hayashi. Right in the chest area. Kind of caught him just a little bit wonky. Couldn't get the scorpion there. But it's game point for Florida 2. And a, off the top of the net, Bauer gets it to go in. And Florida 2 wins and ties it up, Mark, like you asked for. Another Dream Breaker <laughs> yeah. in the semifinal. Thanks. We're going to be going to the Dream Breaker here. The 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. We'll be right back. People play pickleball for exercise, competition, or to hang out with friends. What your reason is doesn't matter to Gamma. What matters is that you play, that you enjoy playing with passion, and you have so much fun you can't wait to play again. At Gamma, we offer paddles perfect for all levels, including yours, because pickleball is about you, the player, and what feels right. Pickleball is your game. Make Gamma your paddle. Play to live. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. I just gotta go hard. So we are back, pickleball fans, and we couldn't have asked for anything more. We were just talking about it. I'm Peter Jazernak alongside Mark Speckman. We were just speaking of how we were hoping for dream breakers, and guess what? All we've gotten so far, Mark, is a dream breaker. Yeah, we're back to a dream breaker. So again, each uh, each match between the schools here is uh, five lines or five games. Uh, we play a men's a women's doubles followed by men's doubles, two mixed doubles. It's the first one to win three games. If it's tied up at 2-2, we go to the dream breaker. 
That's where we're at here as we have Florida number one and Florida number two all tied out, tied up. With the Dream Maker, the home team gets to put their lineup out first, right? The home team submits their lineup. I don't know who the home team is. I guess it would be Florida two. And then the visiting team gets to match it up. Um, and then each player will come out and play four points. And so we'll play uh, four points and then rotate as we go through all four players. And we'll keep playing until someone wins at 21. Got to win by two. Must win on your serve. Again, playing rally scoring where every rally earns a point. And we talked about it a couple times in the last two matches. And the singles play is going to be uh, interesting how they set their lineups up here. Whether they go and match strengths or if they try to switch it up a little bit, Mark, we'll see. Yeah, it is an interesting strategy. I think even, um, you know, in some formats of this, it's a strategy to choose whether or not you want to put your lineup out first or not. But here, I think we are going with the home team putting the line out first. You know, last time we saw that. Uh, we had a couple of men that played against each other, and then we had some uh, a female male matchup too. That was crucial. So, so is that uh, if you if you're choosing, do you already say okay, if how, how do you go about it if you're the team that is reading the lineup that's been submitted? Do you uh, you just you go straight matchup? So you you want you like. Well, to, to me, my strategy would be as a coach with that is I want the, the lineup that's going to give me the best chance to win three out of four of them, right? So, Do you play your best player first? So, I mean, I, ideally, like in baseball, the guys that hit at the top of the lineup are going to hit more often. So whoever's at the top of that lineup, does that set does that factor into it at all? Do you want that person out there the most? I think so, especially if I'm submitting my lineup first. I think I want to put my strongest out there uh, first for sure, so that way I get my best people on the court more often. Now, if I'm reacting to that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't if, if my best player I know is a step below the other team's best player, um, I'm, I might have to sort of sacrifice that first stop, first spot, and play him a little bit later. Um, I think these what we're seeing here is you know all these young students. And athletes, I mean, they are so athletic. Mm -hmm. and I enjoy watching them play uh, the doubles, but I tell you what, the singles has been exciting. When you see them display their athletic talents on the single court and their quickness, um, it's things that uh, you and I can't even imagine doing on a pickleball court. Well, we're standing here watching Jake Bauer go laterally on this court, and I would have probably busted a Achilles, rolled a knee. I mean, he just in two hops side to side went from one one side of the court to out on the other side of the court. Yeah. So I mean, just crazy fast, c crazy quick at all these guys. And like I said, we were talking before, they, I'm sure they play each other a lot. So it'll be interesting to see how they match it up. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. You know, so there's $6,000 in scholarship money on the line here today. Uh, these teams have come from all over to participate in this. And the top four get burst to the Nationals in Houston, Texas in November. In that Houston tournament, there'll be $32,000 in scholarship on the line. So I mean, there's a little bit at stake here, you know, to help pay for that college education for these players. So uh, quite impressive to see how far it's come for opportunities for young children in college. Yeah, with some of these pickleball clubs already getting sponsors from some of the different uh, companies, and we're hearing about pickleball NIL deals now, so uh, exciting times for these athletes and for pickleball. Again, we've talked about it earlier, uh, having two teams from the University of Florida in yeah. those finals. I mean, uh, sort of that thing, you know, iron sharpens iron down there on that campus. They must be down there really battling it out, all improving. And they will face Clemson. See them warming up over here as well. So do you, uh, are you, Clemson, are you secretly rooting for one team or the other? I don't really have a side in this. I will say, you know, I went and visited Clemson with my daughter, and I could have probably found a home in Tigertown down oh, there yeah. visiting her. That was a, a lot of fun, but she ended up going up to Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh instead, so I got to miss out in the Tigertown, so I don't, I don't really have an allegiance here. I just want to see good pickleball here. I will say this. I saw a video on the line <laughs> uh, that uh, the facilities at Florida are – Spectacular. I don't know about the pickleball facilities, but the athletic facilities at Florida are, and when I say, I don't know that they're pickleball included in all that, just being this a club sport, but uh, just crazy pools and 
drinks and food and everything, but we're going to get set here for the first pairing, and it's going to be Jake Bauer and Christian Frank. I think we are getting their top two singles players right off the bat here, probably. It's just started to get a little bit quiet. Coach Tom, I mean, referee Tom Richardson getting us started. And they will serve four points here. That one sails out on Jake Bauer. So Christian Frank and Four to one, take an early 1-0 lead. That serve goes wide. Hate to miss that serve in this format when you're just out there for four points. A big yeah. opportunity missed. Inside out, great job there. Two-handed backhand just absolutely buried in the corner. Good shot Jake Bauer and he is excited about that. That's our, all his teammates. Tries to go across the other way and hits the top of the net, and that's going to be the four points for those two guys, and we're going to have a second rotation. Interesting. So we're going to get Matthew the guys and playing Django. the guys, and then the ladies will be matching up. <laughs> Maxwell rules serving in the far court. Ahead 3-2. Playing Django to song and he hits it out again. And it's a 4-2 lead. And that one sails on him. Got a little quiet here. There's nobody else to practice. And the tension, you could just feel it here. It's five to two. That one sails out on Django and a disappointing round for him, I'm sure. It's not what he wanted. Maxwell kept them deep there, got four points. So now we flip to the ladies here with uh, four to two down eight four, right? It is. Or a four to two up eight four. Lauren Hayashi Six two, sends I'm it sorry, out. Score there. Hayashi sends that serve long and Falthito serving in the near side here. Down three six and a great passing shot there. Hayashi, I think it was maybe he's letting it go out. I think it, it might go out now, but she just couldn't get it. It's too See good. That replay, just a nice flick right across court. Falthito Font serving 4 6. She hits that one a little too strong. Not enough flip of the wrist there. Hayashi with that kind of sidearm serve. That sidearm forehand, and that one goes into the net. That's 7 5 for Florida 1. You see Adele and Martina here. Tom Richardson doing his job and getting him on the right side of the court to serve here. Great shot there by Adele. Got her real deep. Martina unable to get the forehand over. She went back to that corner and just missed wide. Marcin Martina Sunston serving 6-8 in this Dream Breaker match. Semifinal number two. Chance to go play Clemson and a big strong overhead by Martina and the crowd gets behind her. It's a 7-8 game here, the last of their four points here in this rotation. So we'll switch it out again here in just a second. Oh, what touch and what a shot there on the line for Adele Dorian. And that was impressive. Four to one now with a 9-7 lead. It's Frank and Bowers back on the court against each other. Call is out. I guess they do have a challenge. I don't know if they would want to take it or not. Frank called it out immediately. He was skipping that way. 
think Bowers agreed that it was out. Just was wishing it had fallen in. 10-7. Oh, great shot there by Frank. And it's going to be 11 points. They're going to switch sides. Frank was excited about that one. It was a good shot. Yeah, went over and gave the teammate the high five. Knew it was the time to switch sides. We're at 11-7. Let's get semifinal number two. Florida two versus Florida one. Florida two. Yeah, Duper's going to run eight Super Regionals this year. This is the fourth here at Georgia at Pickle and Social. Jake Power ran around that forehand to hit a backhand. Christian Frank couldn't quite get that one over the net. Christian on the wrong side here. Back, back in the right spot here at 8 11. Power unable to get that one over. Maybe 12 8. I mean, Maxwell Rule and Django just song. Twelve eight rule serving. Oh, what a shot right in the corner. Perfect placement. Rule gives him the clap of the paddle and says, Great shot. Too good. Django Chisong with a great shot. Serving here nine twelve. Sets up a really good shot. Kept him back deep, popped it up. Oh, what a shot, Jingo. Is that good down the line again? That was a great shot right down the line. I don't think it was in. I mean, it was, I thought it was inside the line for sure, yeah. Side by about a eight to 10 inches. Jingo serving 11-12. Oh, and he had him too. If he was leaning the wrong way, just catches the top of the net and it's gonna be turnover to the ladies and Hayashi and Falthito Font. So Florida one hanging on to a narrow lead here for the chance to face the Clemson Tigers in the final. Just couldn't quite get it up over the top of the net there and it'll be 12-13 for Florida two. Yashi having a run all over the court. Had her running side to side and finally got one she just couldn't get to. There were some great gets back there. Dr. Falti the phone with great hustle. Hayashi serving 14-12. She's got her on the run again. Great placement side to side there by Lauren. Three point lead. This dream breaker, dream breaker match. And there's excellent work there by Hayashi. Switch it over to Sunston and Adele Dorian. 16-12 for Florida, one. Dell sends that one wide. Not what she did in her first round. She looked outstanding in the first round. That one catches wow. the top. Impressive work there from Martina. A deep serve to the backhand, followed up by a deep drive to the backhand. Keeping Adele pinned up over there. I like the strategy. Martina serving 14-16. Really deep serve there, to your point. And that one was a little too deep. She called it out. 17-14. One thing I think you do have to be careful with these ladies. Sometimes you think you're setting them up to their backhand, but the way these ladies hit these two-handed backhands, mm -hmm. you might want to hit to their forehand sometimes. You're not, you're not kidding. They're strong. I mean. 
Well, that was a perfect shot right in the line. The Del Dorian Thank you, drops it in there. Showing off why you don't want to hit it with your hand and backhand there. <laughs> On Some cue. good stuff. So Florida won now with an 18-14 lead. Christian Frank and Jake Bauer squaring off. And this is a sight to see. And a tip off the net. Gets up over the top of the head of Jake Bauer. He's unable to return it. And Christian these athletic Frank. guys running everywhere all over the court. This is fantastic. Christian Frank tried to give him the customary, I'm sorry for over the net. <laughs> but Bowers didn't really want to have anything to do with that at this point right now. 19-14. They're going at it. Oh, what a uh, shot. <laughs> Jake Bauer. Smart Great patience shot. from Jake Bowers right there. Smart as he just took his time and found the open court. He'll be serving 15-19. And he serves it out. A little too strong. And that's point 20. So Florida one serving for this Dream Baker and for the match. 2015 and Jake Bauer unfortunately hits it in the net and Florida one takes it. And they will go to the finals to face the Clemson Tigers. So Florida one escapes there, Mark. Yeah, awesome stuff. I think really impressed by the performance of Christian Frank there as he's sort of, I mean, all great players. But I mean, I think he stepped up and was definitely the MVP of that round. And so now we're going to have an exciting matchup here at Pickle and Social in Buford with the Clemson Tigers versus the Florida Gators. People play pickleball for exercise, competition, or to hang out with friends. What your reason is doesn't matter to Gamma. What matters is that you play, that you enjoy playing with passion, and you have so much fun you can't wait to play again. At Gamma, we offer paddles perfect for all levels, including yours, because pickleball is about you, the player, and what feels right. Pickleball is your game. Make Gamma your paddle. Play to live. live. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. I just gotta go hard. these new gamma paddles. Yo, I gotta try that paddle. Here you go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Play with style. Play with quantum by Gamma Pickleball. At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOs and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOs active recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOs.
Well, we're back. This is the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. We are live at Pickland Social in Buford, Georgia, and it's going to be Clemson facing Florida in the final here, Mark. Yeah, we've made it to the championships. 36 teams from uh, around the country came uh, to compete. Now we're down for the final two. Uh, this is uh, not a new thing for Clemson as they are the defending champion from the Super Regional last year. So they're going to take on the Florida Gators here in the finals. For those out there that don't know about how this started, it's, it's the Duper Collegiate National Championships, the Premier, Premier Collegiate Series, started in 2022 with 16 schools and just keeps growing, Peter. And, it's, uh, it's turned into this, and we're down to the final two here in this Georgia Super Regional. It's Clemson going to start it off serving here. Seeley Feldman serving along with her partner, Fiorella Bazzetto, taking on Adele Dorian, who just returned that serve, and her partner, Lauren Hayashi. That ball popped up on the net, sat on the net, and then fell right back down. Unfortunate break there for Seeley. So if you're just tuning in, the way these matches work, we're playing five games to complete a match. It'll be one game of men, women's doubles, one game of men's doubles, two games of mixed doubles. It's so the first one to win three wins the match. If we happen to get tied at 2-2, two -two, we'll play the Dream Breaker, which is a format where the players will all come back and compete in a singles format. We'll cover that if we get to it. We've seen two exciting Dream Breakers already. Can only hope for just one more. Good mess. That's a great point there. When Hayashi ended it, unfortunately putting in the net, but great hustle there by Fiorella Bazzetto all over the court there. Seeley Feldman backing her up. Great point. And that one sails long on Bazzetto. You'll notice we are playing rally scoring here. So rally scoring is a little different than your traditional format. Every rally earns a point. You also notice the players stay on their own side of the court. They are allowed to switch at timeouts or at the changeover at 11. We'll be playing to 21. Got to win by two, and you must win on your serve. I think the referee, Mr. Tom, called the score wrong. Just making sure correction here. 4-1. Florida leading Clemson in the finals here. The Georgia Super Regional. And Unforced air there by Sealy. She wants that one back, I'm sure. It's a lot of power there by Bazzetto. She's at the net with a full forehand swing. It's tough to return. Adele Dorian wasn't able to. And now it's 2 5. Del Dorian. That was the matrix move there too, to get out of the way. Good eye. Good body court awareness. Dorian will serve here 6-2. It's hard to do, Mark. Just want to hit it, hit it, hit it. Let it go. Good wow, hustle there by Bazzetto. Amazing get back there. That was outstanding and Hayashi just swung a miss on that one. I'm not sure what happened there. So Clemson beat a team from Southeastern to get here, and Florida beat some of their University of Florida counterparts to advance to the finals. Into the net is Seeley Feldman's shot. And Lauren Hayashi is going to serve here up 7-3. Great hands there by Seeley, and she puts it right on the line. Great shot, Seeley Feldman. Getting attacked there. Able great. to get her hands in there and get it just enough to stay inside the line. See it in that box. Perfect shot there, right on the line. Great camera angle, good work. Five seven here. Clemson trailing. 
Florida serving here, 8-5. See Fiorella really trying to get across the court there and Tori and tries to go behind her. Adele unable to make that happen and hits the net. 6-8 here for Clemson. Playing to 21, so plenty of time left here. Both teams kind of settled in. Figuring out the strategy. We'll switch sides at 11. We'll talk a little more strategy then. As a yeah, the Clemson running. ladies were really the strength in their matchup against Southeastern in the semifinals. Uh, this is a little bit more tightly contested here. What a, slide. a little miscommunication there by Florida. Now Clemson serving 7-9. Hayashi and Adele Dorian didn't communicate well on that one. That one's popped up and Bozzetta puts it away quickly. Eight serving nine here for Clemson. Really good deep return of serve by Adele. What a shot! Skipped right off the line. And perfect was misdirection. Right off the line. Perfect misdirection there by Adele. Sort of trying to keep Fiorelli over to the left. I mean, they are. We do have a lefty-righty combination for Clemson here, but Fiorelli is definitely covering the middle. And then some. She's hitting that one on the opposite side. She drops it in there nicely and sets up a perfect point. Great job, Bozzetto. She's going to be something to handle in that singles if they come down to it. Seen some really good ladies pickleball action here. The finals, the Duper Georgia Super Regional. We're going to switch sides here, Florida with an 11-9 lead. And this is everything we signed up for right here. Another great angle there. You can see that shot hit right on the line. Yeah, it's great. Great pickleball right here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. Six indoor courts, eight outdoor courts, table tennis, cornhole. Best food you'll find everywhere by super chefs here. So it's a, an incredible facility to have this incredible event. Excited to be a part of it here, Peter. Just. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. How do you, how do you handicap in this one so far? Well, I think um, each one of these teams has settled down. I mean, neither one of them got rattled. I think we saw Seely get rattled early on in that first semifinal match. She got rattled a little bit. Um, that's not happening here. I think Adele got rattled a little bit early on in the, uh, their first semifinal match. But she's, she's come back and she's been consistent, consistent. And you see uh, Hayashi and Bozzetto really just trying to exert a little more, you know, of themselves in the points and really get into it and it's turned into a good match. I think all these ladies have won a lot of pickleball matches. Probably don't play a whole lot of them with $6,000 in scholarship money on their own. Though. You're not kidding. Fiorella Bozzetto with a big overhead that just catches the top of the net and just falls in. So the top four teams here today, which obviously these are the top two, all advance to the Nationals. The Nationals, they play for $32,000 in scholarship money. Today we've got $6,000 on the line. Great really. job of Adele Dorian to just get it back. And they would say, you know, just one more shot. Just give them one more shot. And unfortunately, an unforced error there by Bozzetto. She hits it low. 12-10. Florida with the lead. That one, two-handed backhand sails on her again. So it's a 13-10 lead now. I think uh, Hayashi and Dorian have really just stayed the course. Just keep getting it back. Just keep getting it back. I think these Florida players have to have a lot of confidence too, knowing they got Christian Frank sitting in the wings, <laughs> waiting to come on the court next for their team. We've seen him kind of dominate play earlier today. Doing his best Ben Johns impression. Presenter with a really good setup for a point. Good hands by Hayashi to get it back. And then Adele Dorian unable to get it back over. And it's 
12 13 now. Just catches the bottom of the paddle there for Sealy. 14 12. Florida trying to win match game one, excuse me, of this finals match. Oh, big rush of shot there by Pizzetto. She's quick to pounce on anything that's left up in the zone. She's serving here 13-14. Two-handed backhand that somehow missed the paddle and stayed in. Clemson serving here. Seely Feldman serving 14-15. Nice two-handed backhand attack right there from Adele. Adele serving 16-14. Adele. That's the second time I've seen her with a great eye. It's going to be timeout for Clemson. All right, so we're at 17 14. Florida with the lead. That's a timeout. They get two of them. Can't take them with you, so you might as well use them. I think it's down by time. three. I don't think it's a bad timeout at all. I think this is a good time for Clemson to think about what they want to do right here. So obviously, what is working is Fiorella Bazzetto is closing in on points. She's able to finish. But Florida's just been able to keep it away from her just enough. And they are doing a good job of attacking her when they get the balls to attack. So, I mean, they're they're just not staying away from her. They're playing the right shots, you know, when they get it. But they're waiting and picking their moments. Um, just really smart pickleball play. I think we've seen very few balls get attacked that are unattackable balls. Uh, I mean, these ladies just all have a very high pickleball IQ. And uh, it's really fun to watch. Hayashi serving 17-14. Another touch shot there by Mazzetto, and then she fires back. Adele unable to put that one away. A little pop up there by Seeley and in the net, and I can promise you Adele Dorian wants that one back. Well, it seems like every time we've seen Fiore cut that ball over there to that side, she's getting a pop up back. I'd like to see that dink come back to the middle. Good back and forth there. Fiorella all over the court. Seely unable to get it back, and it's 18-15 for Florida. Yeah, she's attacking when she can. Yeah, that's such good play from Seely there, just doing her job, keeping the ball deep in the court, deep in the court, over and over, keeping until a, getting her partner there. a chance to play. Yeah, it's just such good pickleball. Now again, look at these beautiful drops. Wow, good call. But man, she was able to pick it up. Great shot, good hands. Good awareness of the court there too, again. 17-18. That one goes just out. I've seen her have a few of those backhanded shots. It's the first time we've seen her do the forehand down there. Good flick of the wrist, but just out, and it's 19-17 for Florida. See Bozzetto extended herself a little bit farther there. 18-19. I'd like to see a deep serve here to put some pressure on. Great 
shot. Nice. Goes right at the body there of Hayashi. And Bezzetto is going to serve here with a tie ball game. They just stayed in it, stayed in it. It's now tied 19 and Turner goes out. So Clemson going to serve for the match. They're going to challenge this call on the line. Well, you know, again, you can't take the challenges with you either. So yeah, you're right might be that. a good time to challenge. You know, the rules here, only outside line calls are able to be challenged. Each team gets two video challenges per game. And it was out. If you get the challenge right, you keep the challenge. If you get to use it again later in the game. I think that was a quick one, though, here. What a job by this crew. Well done. Well done. It's, uh, it's impressive and, and in a hurry. That's the thing. Is if you're going to challenge it, it's got to be a system that works and it's in a hurry. And playing collegiate here at Duper, that's some pretty great technology to be able to have. And it's 1920. The NFL might be able to learn a little bit from our production team about yeah. how to execute challenge. Good job there by Hayashi. Now she's on the attack. Oh, these ladies keep the ball coming And that one sails out. And the Clemson Tigers came back. They stayed in it, they stayed in it, and they finally just were able to get over the top there. And they take a one nothing lead. So excitement here in the finals of the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. We'll be back in just a minute with the men's doubles. Yeah. Let's go. We just got to go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. these new gamma paddles. Yo, I gotta try that paddle. Here you go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Play with style. Play with quantum by Gamma Pickleball. At UFOS, we don't make footwear. We make shock absorbers, fatigue fighters, mobility maximizers. This is the science of active recovery. Revolutionary UFOM technology absorbs impact and reduces pressure. It's the foundation of every pair of UFOs and the key to recovering faster. This is not a shoe. This is UFOs active recovery. Activate your recovery with UFOs. Welcome back, Pickleball fans. I am Peter Jezernak alongside Mark Spackman, and we are live at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia for the finals of the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. And Mark, uh, if any of the rest of these games are as exciting as game one was with those ladies playing, uh, we, we were, in, we're in for a treat. Yeah, that was great. Uh, Florida jumped out to a lead, and then uh, Clemson battled back. Uh, you know, the format here is we're playing uh, five lines. So it's a line of women's doubles followed by men's doubles, then two mixed doubles, and uh, then our dream breaker if we're tied up at two at that point. So uh, we've uh, both semifinal matches with the dream breakers today, so we've had tons of excitement. Happy to be a part of it here. Yeah, we got to see Florida beat, I mean, uh, Clemson beat Southeastern, and then Florida one faced Florida two. Four to one, able to win it and 
take an early lead and really led most of that whole first game here in the finals. And uh, Clemson just able to hang on and hang on and they were came out on top. And so it's gonna make uh, for an interesting men's match here now. For sure, we got this SEC, ACC battle here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. So uh, another minute or so they're warming up here. Again, it's gonna be Christian Frank and Maxwell Rule from Florida taking on Kyle Compton and Colin Pelfrey for Clemson. And uh, initial thoughts on this match, Mark? Well, my initial thoughts is what we saw earlier was, you know, Christian Frank was really has been the, the most dominant player on the court in each of his matches. So uh, Clemson's going to have to figure out a strategy to how to neutralize him. We've talked about some of those ways, maybe returning to him uh, deep in the corner to keep him back, to keep him, you know, to set up more court space for his partner to hit the second ball, uh, trying to go behind him when you can. Um, but, I mean, he's a tough uh player to figure out as he's just so over and then you know can't take anything away from Maxwell I mean Maxwell stepped up in that dream breaker for the team and is also super steady so it's a uh, it's hard to figure it out I mean this is a good pair here so I think it's going to be quite a challenge for the Clemson uh, guys here but um, you know they've, they've done it before right yeah. this is a, they're going for back-to-back -back championships so I don't think it's anything that they haven't figured out before nothing new for them and good crowd on hand Sticking around for the finals. Again, Clemson leads 1-0. They're going to start with a serve. Game two, Colin Pelfrey going to serve from the right side, playing with Kyle Compton. Good deep serve to start. And that one sails out on Colin. Christian Frank going to start it off for Florida. They play with Maxwell Rule. Maxwell short hops it. Tough shot there. Tried to pick it up and couldn't get it over the net. And it's 1-1. One, one. Big old serve there by Kyle Compton. Shot there by Maxwell Rule. Had Kyle kind of on his heels there. Three, one. Kyle's got that nasty backhand slice that stays so low. Christian Frank unable to get it back. That's a wicked shot right there. I saw it perfectly down that angle. That's a tough shot to return. That one sails on him. Same guy. And the one thing we saw earlier with these Clemson players, I mean, man, they are heck of singles players. Man, right? I mean, they, could, they can play some singles. So um, Florida wants to try to take advantage here. Clemson serving 3-4 here. Big old serve there by Kyle. And a good eye. The Gamma Chuck ball sails a little long. We're playing with the Gamma Chuck ball. It's the official ball duper here. And all the players have been talking real positive about it around the facility. Side out here for Florida. 5-4 lead. That backhand backspin return again. Sailed out there on Colin Pelfrey in point for Florida. Christian Frank starting to get comfortable. 7-4 lead for Florida. Great job there by Colin Pelfrey to neutralize him. Kind of went behind him once and then went to the middle. Five. 
Service error for Clemson. And we'll go back to Florida with an 8-5 lead. Mm -hmm. That ball skipped right off the back line there. Yeah, just pulled it a little bit. Clemson serving 6-8. Good patient pick a ball here by both sides. Yeah, speed up there by Christian Frank and pretty good hand battle. Ends up in the net on the side of Clemson. So Florida going to serve here. 9-6 lead. Great job, great patience. A lot of patience. I can see they maybe move some of those dinks a little bit more to the middle and deeper to try to set up some attacks. 10-6 Florida, and that one sails wide, so a run here and we're gonna switch sides. Florida scores four, and it's 11-6 mark. If you're Clemson, how do you answer this? I think I'm just going to keep doing what I'm trying to do. It, it looks like that uh, Colin and Kyle have made a noticeable uh, decision to try to slow it down a little bit. I think they're just going to keep trying to slow it down and pick their spots. Uh, maybe work it to Maxwell a little bit, keeping it away from uh, Christian on that. So, so we'll switch sides here, and Florida's going to serve, again, leading 11-6. to six, The halfway point here of... Game number two, Clemson won game one, exciting women's match. And if this one's like that one, don't count Clemson out. Yeah, the other thing, Peter, as you're asking, I'll just say, I mean, the thing, and there we see from Christian Frank a deep serve. I just think, I mean, this is this is high level pickleball here we're sure. watching, but there's still an opportunity for deeper serves and deeper return of serves. I mean, that really sets up a point both ways is the depth on the serve and the return of serve. As we talk that, we see deep serves from both players. But. It's kind of a off the top of the paddle there. Tough shot. And it's 12-7 now, Florida. And if you're Clemson, you can't let them get too far away. Good hands there by Maxwell Rule. It goes cross court to Colin Pelfrey. And it's 13-7 now for Florida. That one goes in the net. Yeah, now I do think when you get in this situation too, you know, Clemson's got the advantage that they won the first game. So this might be the time too that you start trying to, to do some things a little different than you have. See if you can find an, a weakness on your opponent that you haven't exploited yet. Yep. That you can use later in the mixed matches. The turn of service goes out by Maxwell Rule and he's not happy with himself. It's 9-13. Speed up there right at Colin Pelfrey, and he's a, unable to get it back over, and it goes back to Florida up 14-9. Maxwell Rule kind of telegraphed that. Kyle Compton was there but just unable to get it back over and Clemson's gonna call a timeout here down 9-15. Yeah, six points, you know, you can pick that up quick and rally scoring, so uh, rally scoring really, uh, he can get back in it in no time at all, so we'll see. There's gotta be a concerted effort to, I think, go towards the middle and try to keep away from Christian Frank as best you can. 
Yeah, I think you just want to see aggression. I understand players being a little tight here. I mean, there's a lot on the line. Six thousand right. dollars in scholarship money. You probably got all your friends back in the door and watching you know, live stream at home. You know, everybody critiquing your pickleball game. I mean, hey, being a little anxious, but I mean, these players are stepping up. I mean, they've been here before. Clemson's a defending champion. We've seen Florida come up big, but uh, I think now everybody just needs to take a deep breath and sort of let it go right here and play yeah. some pickleball. I'd like to see Clemson be a little more aggressive. Even though they are down, but I mean, really got nothing to lose, like you said, up 1 0. Yeah, go for it. See if it works. That return of surf <laughs> hits the line. Super, super good shot there, that backhand by Compton. And then he doesn't quite get back far enough for the overhead, and it sails off the top of his paddle in another point for Florida. Love the deep slice return to start that off, though. So. Um. And Frank poked the bear over there. And well, Colin Pelfrey had to do is shake his head. It's a good shot. Kind of caught him off guard, but perfectly placed. Two-handed speed up from the knees. I mean, yeah, really. Frank tries it again and hits it in the net. So it'll go service to Clemson with a 10-17 score. Again, can't let it get too out of control, but need to score a couple here for sure. They're going after Maxwell Rule. Frank steps in and great hands by Colin Pelfrey. Man, good point. It's one of those frustrating ones, isn't it? You make three great stabs to yeah. keep it going, but the ball just keeps coming back harder and harder. It's just changing that trajectory a little bit. If you can just get the angle going a little bit in your favor, if you're hitting down on the ball and your opponent's hitting up, you're eventually going to win that point. That one sails long. And it's 11-18. Great serve there by Kyle. Look at that big wicked overhand. It's going to be fun if we have a dream breaker to see him play some singles. Lob there by Frank. Tell free a little miscommunication with Kyle. But unable to get the lob back. That was a great lob by Christian Frank. See very, all parts of his well game. Di very well disguised. That's... One when you're just like, I thought I'd seen it all, and now you're going to throw <laughs> one more trick out right, at me. Right. Same guy hits that one right in the net. Goes back over to Clemson, 12-19. Good job communicating there by Florida. You hear Christian telling Maxwell, you, you, you. Maxwell's been super steady over yeah. there. He's not missing balls. He's just a backboard, just doing his thing, playing his role. Good shot, good deep shot. Pelfrey unable to get it back, and it's game point here. So Florida trying to even it up. I think anybody out here would be glad to have Maxwell on their right side over there. So yeah, without a doubt. First game point here for Florida. And Maxwell tries to flip it down the line and didn't get quite enough topspin on that one. Hey, we haven't seen him go for that a lot. I thought he was going to play a steady back in the middle and wait, but good time to go for it. Catch your opponents off guard. 14-20, Clemson serving. And now it's going to go back over for another game point opportunity for Florida. Christian Rule going to serve. Let's go to your point before talking about taking a timeout. I don't we'll think have they Maxwell need to. to serve, yeah, yeah. So might would be a thing to take that time out to get a different look. 2014 and Max Christian goes around the post and it hits the post. So it's going to be point to Clemson. I think he was asking his partner if he thought it was out. It's close. It's hard to see from us from over there, the net in the way, but Kyle Compton serving down 15-20. Clemson trying to stay alive here. Great hands by Christian Frank. Too much for Pelfrey, and it's another game point for Florida. Great shot there by Kyle Compton. 
Nice, slow, steady shot. Good patience. Put it right in the right spot. So 16-20. Yeah, Clemson did not get here for the second year of the row by giving up. No. They are battling. They battled, battled back, come from behind win in game one. They're battling back here, 2016, but Florida's gonna have another game point opportunity. All four players of the kitchen line here. Playing patient pickleball. Good speed up there, Florida gonna take it. Frustrated Kyle Compton, but played a heck of a game. They didn't give up, they kept coming back. We are tied here, 1-1, Clemson, Florida, all tied up. We're gonna be back with game number three of the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. play pickleball for exercise, competition, or to hang out with friends. What your reason is doesn't matter to Gamma. What matters is that you play, that you enjoy playing with passion, and you have so much fun you can't wait to play again. At Gamma, we offer paddles perfect for all levels, including yours, because pickleball is about you, the player, and what feels right. Pickleball is your game. Make Gamma your paddle. Play to live. Live. Yeah. yeah, let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah, I just gotta go hard. Uh, I just gotta go hard. Game number three, we're tied up 1-1. Florida and Clemson in the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. I'm Peter Jezernak alongside Mark Spackman. And we are looking at Christian Frank and Adele Dorian for Florida facing off against Kyle Compton and Fiorella Bazzetto. An early match, magic there. I'm gonna sail out on Kyle Compton. So a two nothing lead here for Florida. It's gonna be fun, Mark. Yeah, I feel like they've put their two number one mixed teams up against each other right here. Tell goes down the line again, just sails out. Big serve there by Compton and it hits the net. So it'll be three two. Excuse me, 3-1 uh, Florida, goodness. Compton, a local player here from the Johns Creek area that's attending Clemson University and representing their pickleball team here. Back-to-back -back service errors. I'm sure they want back. Christian Frank all over the court. Good reset there by Fiorel Bozzetto, but good point. <laughs> Giving each other props there, I love it. Good sportsmanship by all these folks out here. Seen it all the last two days. Another lob by Frank. And Compton hits it a little bit long. Florida has a 5-2 lead. It appears Clemson has an easy uh, early strategy to try to keep Christian Frank back in the court. He's been dominating play here today all day. We've been watching that. Um, Great shot by Fiorella Bozzetto. She is not going to back down from anybody. She was part of that comeback win in game one. 
Two points is nothing for her. Hoping for a dream breaker, Mark. I really am. Good back and forth with Fiorella and Christian, and Fiorella wins that one. Yeah, this is exciting right here. I, was, I mean, they're, you know, again, all great, incredible student athletes here, all great pickleball players, tons of athletic ability. But I do think Christian Frank and uh, Fiorella Bazzetti are the two top players that we've seen so far. They're strong here. Strong I mean, player. And, uh, and battling up against each other in this first. I mean, I know I think each team is counting on them to get the win for them. For sure. It's tied up. 5-5. Five, five and. Compton backhand finds the top of the net and doesn't fall over, so it'll be Adele Dorian. So I'd say what Adele has just been steady all day. She's got a little rattle, I think, early, but has really just get it back, get it back. About Adele is that she, I mean, she just doesn't make unforced errors. You know, she's just super, super steady over there on the right side. I think that's the same thing we saw from Maxwell in the men's match. Uh, he was super steady over there well too. So, I mean, they know their role and they just do it really, really well. Christian Frank all over the court. That was a great shot. Good hands. Christian Frank, only a sophomore. Been playing tennis for 14 years. You obviously know he can cover the court. Yes. But just not sure how much more tennis he's going to be playing if he plays yeah. pickleball like this. We might be watching him on the PPA tour here. Bezzetto, not happy with herself on that one. Find themselves trailing by five right now. We'll have a switch of sides at 11. That one sails out. So Bezzetto is going to serve 6 10. Really good defense here by Bozzetto. Great shot. Two-handed backhand down the line. Loved how she moved in and attacked. Told you she's not going to give up. It's now 7-10. Tries down the line again. Christian Frank is there. Tough luck break. there. Tough luck. A really good point. Everybody was patient on there, going side to side. A little confusion there, but referee Tom Richardson getting it all straightened out. We're at 8-10. Tom Richardson, our certified referee, known across the country as being one of the best at his craft. 8-10, Clemson in Florida. Game three of this finals match. And lots of fireworks going on right here in this first mixed doubles match. And we're going to switch sides at 11-8. And Mark, I, you couldn't ask for much more. Some really, really high-level pickleball. No, it's exciting stuff. We're uh, switching here, 11-8. Game three, Florida versus Clemson, ACC versus SEC. A battle right here at Pickle and Social in Buford, Georgia. Uh, you know, a premier facility for a uh, premier event. This is uh, six indoor courts, 14 outdoor courts, table tennis, cornhole. I mean, great food by top chefs. and. I mean, what an event that Duper has put together with these uh, collegiate championships, bringing schools together all across the country, offering scholarship money. Impressive. I mean, if anybody's growing pickleball right now, uh, you know, Duper is doing that with this. I'm just excited to be a part right here. Looks like we're getting back to the action. 11-8, Christian Frank serving here on the near side. His partner, Adele Dorian. Can you hear the... Clemson faithful getting behind Bozzetto and Kyle Compton. Compton serving 9-11. That law by I can tell you, both Frank of these teams out. think they can win this match right I, here. I wouldn't count either one of them out for yeah, sure. This is going down to the wire. I think 
Kyle Carlton's got a lot of fire in him. Oh, unforced error there by Fiorella. It's a point to Florida and it's 12-10. It's a great return of serve by Fiorella. You've been saying it all day, but that deep serve is keeping him back there and he didn't get it over the net. Deep serve, deep returns, it's a key. Point to Clemson and a big serve by Kyle Compton. Goes right after Adele. Great <laughs> shot and misdirection by Bozzetto. Just again, left it open. Clemson coming back. Can't blame him for squeezing the middle. It's been Man. working all day, but he got baited right into that one. Good communication. That's tough. And she does it again. That one was just out. I think we're going to get a challenge here. Or maybe not. I think Fiorella was, was thinking out. about it. She it was really close. Looking at the replay, and it is just out. It was really out. good so call. Didn't want to waste her challenge and lose a timeout. Timeouts could be crucial here. A really good drive there by Frank. This is one thing, just from strategy, I know it's a close game, and this could go either way. We're at 14 12, but one thing, if I was. Clemson that I might consider would be putting a switch. I mean, they're having a tr they're having trouble uh, getting uh, Christian Frank out of the way. So if they did a switch and put Fiorelli on the left and let her try to isolate her and Adele, could be a strategy here. But uh, you know, I don't know. something else thinking about over here. Gotcha. Clemson with the point there. Adele Dorian unable to get it back over, and it's 13-14. I like, oh, tough shot there. Fiorella says, I'm sorry, but hey. she's going to take it, and it's going to be a point for Clemson in another tie game. Well, we see T-shirts all over. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. A really good wide shot there by Dorian, keeping Fiorella out there. and She is have consistent. In a little of that fence there, but. Good shot by Adele. It's 15-14 for Florida. See that? That was a great job. Those two really good shots by Fiorella. He's got Christian Frank thinking twice about it, and he went to cover the line, and they went to the center. And it's tied 15-15 now. Got to respect that shot. She goes for it again, and it's in the net. So Florida with a one-point lead. So it is working behind him some, but I think if I'm Christian, I keep staying with the strategy because, I mean, for everyone that he's getting beat over there, he's winning too by being in the middle covering that court. Great touch there by Kyle Compton <laughs> and a fist pump for him. And I told you he can get fired up. You saw him earlier today. He's a fiery guy and perfect touch on that shot. It's beautiful, great hands. Clemson with serve here, tied 16 all, and off the edge of the paddle. Bozzetto. So Florida will serve with a 17 16 lead. Good back and forth pickleball. 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. Oh, she did it again. Nice. Good See that little flip of the wrist from right where we're standing. And it's, it's a thing of beauty. Good shot again by Bozzetto, and it's tied up again. Good shot, Christian Frank. Good communication. I really like the way he talks with Adele and communicates well. He's not, not too late in telling her to get it. 18-17 lead. Oh, swing and a miss. Lots of spin on it. And Fiorella's going to call a timeout. Clemson's going to try to regroup here. She just swung and missed at it. Not sure. Had some good, good top spin on it there. Yeah, so 1917, I think what you're talking about, Peter, with the communication, that's so important, you know. Uh, 
the key is not only knowing what ball is yours or not, but I think the other thing is getting out of the way when it's not your ball. You know, how many times have we all been on the court that we miss a ball because our, our – uh, partner just sort of fainted at a ball or something and, and or took a stab and then pulled back and yeah. now and so they're causing the distraction I, for us I do that all the time so yeah. he's doing a great job of not doing that yeah and I think that communication when Christian is doing that he's letting her know early this is yours or not and then she knows if she's not hearing that she's clearing out of the way and letting him do his thing and then when it's hers she's just not missing I mean right. none of these players are missing the unforced errors are so so small here I mean this is just really high level pickleball just been super phenomenal to work here so I do think here we're going to come back so I think we got Christian serving he has been serving from the middle of the court over here we haven't really forced him wide to hit a backhand third shot yet uh, maybe we can see that here see what Kyle Compton does see, he goes back the ball to the right center back in the middle A great touch there by Christian Frank Kyle Compton let it go thinking it was going out I thought it was going out as well, but it somehow finds a way to drop in there, and it's going to be game point for Florida. A Del Dorian serving with a 2017 lead. That one lands in, and the Florida faithful erupt in cheers as Christian Frank and a Del Dorian are able to knock off. Bozzetto and Kyle Compton, 21-17 mark to take a 2-1 lead. We'll be back here with the second mixed doubles match from the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional in just a minute. Yeah. Let's go. We just got to go hard. Uh. Duper. Two games to one, the 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional. I'm Peter Jezernak along with Mark Spackman and Mark Florida. We brought two teams here, and one of them is now ahead, two games to one over Clemson in this game four, and could be the championship match for, for, Florida, uh, for Florida if they can pull this off. 
Right, yep. So uh, each match is a series of five games. It's a uh, women's doubles followed by men's doubles, two mixed doubles. Then if we get tied up at 2-2, we play the Dream Breaker. That's where Clemson's hoping to push this to. We've seen that that is their specialty. They've been winning Dream Breakers uh, to get here. So, But I know Florida would uh, like to uh, win it right here, not have to worry about that Dream Breaker and take that championship back to the SEC. Crazy first two points had a few balls of rolling on the top of the net. This is always interesting to me when we see this because now we have two guys that were playing on the right side in men's that are now going to the left side um, here. Um, and an earlier play, we saw that could really make a difference. Sometimes, uh, you know, maybe a guy was not really supposed to be on the right side and he gets over here on the left and he just uh, flourishes. And then sometimes we see maybe they're more comfortable on the right. So I'm yeah. curious to see what happens here. I think that was a very generous call there by Maxwell Rule. Very, very generous. That was uh, out. It looked like it was out to me, but anyways. I'll tell you what, there's been such great sportsmanship. I mean, from all these guys, they've been so supportive of their teammates, their opponents. Uh, I mean, the future is, is strong for our country with kids like this out there. Great shot there by Lauren Hayashi. Little misdirection. Clemson team of Seeley Feldman and Colin Pelfrey leading here four to two. A little lob there by Feldman and it sails out of bounds. Players are competing for their share of $6,000 in scholarship money being offered by Duper and the chance to advance to nationals that will be in Houston, Texas in November for another $32,000 in scholarship money. Oh, Sealy Feldman wants that one back. Feldman is senior from Charleston, South Carolina. Basketball and soccer player, a major in marketing, Clemson. Great shot there, good hands, good hustle by Hayashi to get back in the point. And a passing shot, two-handed backhand by uh, Maxwell Rule for the point. Great shot there. Wow, he did not have much of a spot to hit that, but he found it. Uh, talk about finding the spot. <laughs> Lauren Hayashi puts it right down the middle. Not returnable by either one of them. Maybe a little miscommunication there. Hayashi serving with a 6-4 lead now. Start questioning things when you're on the other side of that, when you got somebody passing on your back end and on your <laughs> forehand with shots like that. That's for sure. Not anything he's doing wrong. They just make an incredible shot. Good defense here by Florida. Now they go on the attack, going right at Sealy oh. Feldman. And Ma Maxwell Rule racks up another one for Florida. Three point lead for Florida early in game number four. If Florida can pull this off, they're gonna win the Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional, Mark. Yeah, don't count these Clemson Tigers out of this thing yet. Not they at are all. battle tested. They won it last time. I'm rooting so. for a dream breaker anyways. <laughs> Florida with an 8-5 lead. Lauren Hayashi serving. I really want to see Lauren Hayashi get up to the net a little bit more. Her hands are so good. Tough shot there. Celia Feldman was trying to cover the other side there and it's like both of them end up out of position. It's four point lead for Florida. Yeah. 
Good hands by Sealy Feldman. Little emotion there from Colin Pelfrey. Trying to get back in it here. Serving 6-9. Oh, great shot. Good misdirection there. Maxwell Rule is, haven't seen this from him yet. A really nice two-handed backhand. We saw that in the cross-court drive, and that was a nice two-handed little flick speed up there. So, uh, We were talking about that earlier, you know, you used not to see all these two-hand backhands with the guys everywhere. It's becoming more and more a thing. It's sort of the great way to reset the ball. It's holding that off hand high up on the paddle with the finger up on the side to give him more control and stability. And a back and forth action. And Hayashi gets the better of Colin Pelfrey and it's 11 points now. 11-7 for Florida. We're gonna switch sides and Mark, if you're Clemson, Obviously, they can come back for sure. But again, you can't let it get too far away. Yeah, no, he, uh, I mean, it's four points. You just got to remind yourself there's a reason you're here. Uh, they're the defending champion, so not get too tense. Just come out and do their thing. Um, I think just really play good quality pickleball, you know, picking what balls to attack on. And uh, I do think we're seeing Maxwell start to be a little more aggressive and yep. attack sooner. For sure. And some, sometimes the best way to uh, calm down an attacker is to attack them first. You know, so maybe, you know, I always hear, you know, attack the attacker or, you know, wait and counterattack the counterattacker and make them do the, you know, make them do what's uncomfortable for them. Rule serving here 11 7. And the benefit of a net cord rolling over is Seeley Feldman. And Lauren Hayashi has just been solid all day long. Just steady, wins the race over there, doing her thing. Great shot there by Feldman. Well, how she got that one in. Backhand by Pelfries in the net and point for Florida. Florida leads two games to one. Looking to take game four here and win it all. Hayashi calls that out. I think Clemson may ask for a challenge. The call on the court was out. Referee Tom Richardson told us. And our production crew is excited to be able to get to use this fun technology and it looks like it is out. Oh, hey, I think it, nothing wrong with the challenge right there. Uh, you, you do lose a timeout, but the point might be more valuable than the timeout right there if you think you have any doubt about it. Um, so it's going to be 13 8 for Florida. Calls out, they'll lose their timeout. Just got to get back in it. It's not too late. It's only 13 to eight, playing to 21. Ooh, that's unfortunate. It's a little bit wide there. Took too much of an angle. Now it does get an interesting scenario on another close call with True. whether you would use your challenge and possibly <laughs> lose your last time out in a game that is deciding whether or not you can push it to a dream breaker. $6,000 in scholarship money on the line. Good hands there by Matthew Rule. I tell you, he's, uh, he's impressed me in this match for sure. He's come out of his shell, playing some aggressive, solid pickleball. Yeah, these players are all great. I mean, this is good stuff. Great hands. Oh. Good put away there by Celia Feldman. Couldn't really count out the hands over there, Matthew Rule, but great shot overhead by Feldman, and it's going to be a point in 9:15 now for Clemson. Those are the ones you want back when you look back on the match. 16-9, Lauren Hayashi serving for Florida. 
Great step in there by Pelfrey. And hopefully that get him fired up and the Clemson crowd is trying to get behind their so team they, here. Great hands back and forth there. Rule wins that battle and it'll serve here with a 17-10 lead. Great shot, good hustle by Hayashi. Speed up there by Rule. Good partner there. Puts it away, good hustle again by Hayashi. Yeah, a great get to keep the ball going and then Maxwell speeds up at a very opportune time. Pelfrey steps in again and puts it away. So it's going to be 11-18 for Clemson. They're not going down without a fight. Remember, this is rally scoring. So when we, if, if Florida does get to 21st, they will have to win it on their serve. Gives a chance to a team to get back in it. Rule going to serve for Florida. Good passing shot there by Ayashi and a pump of the fist and a high five for Florida. They're feeling it. So this has been really exciting today here. Comes down to this point right here, possibly. 2011, and that's gonna go out. And Florida is gonna win the 2024 Duper Collegiate Georgia Super Regional and it's high fives all around. And the Florida fans that have stuck around are doing the Gator Chomp mark. So they take it three to one. We won't have the luxury of a dream breaker here. No, that wraps it up. The SEC and Florida takes the championship. I'm super impressed, Peter. Appreciate the time hanging out with you here today. Uh, thanks to Duper, man. Yeah. What, a, what an event they have put together with the collegiate championship. Absolutely. For Mark Spackman, I'm Peter Jezernak. To the crew, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We're out. Uh, I guess.